Okay. Uh, hey, welcome back. Sorry, we're having some issues. We, we're not sure if we're actually, you know, going to have a great card cam, but, you know, we're going to have a great stream nonetheless. Um, yeah, card cams being a little auto focusy, uh, yeah. sometimes in focus, sometimes out of focus. We're going to try to work on that. Yeah, we don't want um, to turn off auto focus, um, but, you know, yeah. what, what can you do, um, you know, besides just live your life? We'll move on, yeah, yeah. we got to move, move on. on. Again, move on. Again, we have our hikey mats, we have our free release boxes. We're going to get yeah. into some uh, good old fashioned streaming gear. Um, and uh, yeah, and so you know we're we're pretty excited here uh, to be on stream uh, yeah. with all our loyal fans. We're gonna pop yeah. open these two pre-release boxes, talk about some of the cards that yeah. we see in rivals. And if, and if you're and if you're a fan that's actually in the Twitch office, we'd love to have you here. We're yeah. down in the sixth floor gaming room. Um, you just, uh, yeah, talk talk to pop us. in, see some cards. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if, uh, if stream is like not great, just. Let um, us know. We'll try to we'll try to adjust it. We don't have a man behind the scenes. Send right a direct now. message to Wumpkins. Just tell him, hey, you should come on down and help those guys. They're kind of kind of losers. They kind of don't know what they're doing. Yeah, um, call him a jerk for not being here. All true statements. I'm having a little trouble opening my box here. There we go. Look at this beautiful uh, countdown uh, life counter. Uh, obviously, the the logo for Rivals is uh, represented with 20, and then you can count all the way down to one. And then finally, you're dead. And usually your opponent's the dead one if you watch our stream, that is for sure. So uh, I like one. We got, you know, the, so I already got one request. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Esper, if we get a blue pre-release die, I'll trade for it. Consider consider that. We have a black and gray one and we have a red and blue well, one. Well we have two more packs. So two if we more. get a blue one, we'll do it. Look at this. Look at this, Mark. Alright. Whoa. Look at these beautiful uh, this beautiful rivals booster pack art. Oh uh, some more we haven't seen yet, guys. Yeah. This is amazing. Let's get these yeah, over underneath like the card cam so we can pull out the best card in the game right here to put it to the side. And we're just going to see some of these. Some of these. Beautiful, beautiful art. Um, I don't even know which one's Jeff's anymore. Was it with that one? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's, oh, yeah, I guess it does. That one is on. Yeah, yes. one on the end. I guess we'll, it does. We'll, we'll, we'll show off. Keep the integrity. Yeah, we'll keep, show off marks. Yeah, we'll show off these right here. We don't know if they're all, but I'll just kind of slide them in and out. Um, we got anger ads. We got an angry dinosaur. We got an angry vampire. We got an angry human person with a with a pole. Um, so, so All right. yeah. And one one important thing is hide. Let's hide away your oh. uh, your rare boy, your pre-release okay. rare boy, and okay. let's not not look at those until after the packs. So we're gonna build yeah, up wow, some anticipation. Really, really. About our our uh, our pre-release uh, rare. I, uh, on cards. I just kind of want to see my rare boy no, right dude, now. No, dude. Like, that's know. that's the thing we have to we have to start uh, you know building in some anticipation for our audience. Okay. So, so these are I got to put like my hand over it so I don't see okay. it. These are our rare cards. Okay. These are our uh, rare so cards. So drop them down. We're not okay. gonna look at it. Not gonna look at Mark's it. Mark's trying to peek at I'm it. Trying to peek <laughs> at it. I really right. I really want to see it because that card's it's it's gonna be shiny maybe. Is it always? It's shiny? always shiny. It's yeah. always shiny. Always you know what I mean? I love shiny you cards. Shiny cards. I love shiny comments the most because I want people to know that I love it because it's shiny, not because it has an R or an M. But you know, why don't we just start? Yeah, let's do it. Let's break it. Wait, should we match like arts? Yeah. Let's let's do we arts. have all matching arts on do these? We? I think we do. Oh, we do. Oh yeah. No, no, no. we don't. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll match them all up until the last yeah. one. All right. So here we go. We're gonna open up our person. Person with a pole. Um, so we're so, gonna talk about with these, uh, you know, in a draft format. If this is like pack one, pick one, which one we take, and then uh, talk about what cards we're maybe looking to use in uh, in sealed decks we can be building from these pre-release boxes. Yeah. Uh, so the first card I have is is an instant one drop moment of triumph. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. You gain two life. Ooh, so, so actually, uh, a pretty solid one drop. It's in white, so you're probably tacking that on to. Uh, to some sort of vampire you have maybe maybe something with lifelink so you're gonna get extra extra lifelink back from the attack plus uh you're actually gaining life with this card as well um you know i think uh i, I pretty much i, I like this card I, I can't say uh i can't say too much bad about that uh it's kind of nice yeah i, don't know. I one, like it plus one drop it, it does enough for me i think you know not obviously not like a bomb or anything like that but definitely a playable yeah, card it's a cool it's a cool combat trick um you know so yeah, they're they're upset about us shaking the table. We're excited, we're, guys. We're actually Listen, not. If you're not as excited as we are, then you, you probably don't want to be here. I don't know. We're, we're, I I don't think I'm. I think it's because like the card cam is on it, so it's so slowly close. Anyways, it's but, okay. But that's the table. 
It's okay. I don't know. We'll stop. We'll stop shaking it. No, no, this table it shakes in the, in the shot. You know? oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. It's okay. It's we'll right. stop shaking it. Listen, we're gonna uh, try. We're gonna try. But we're excited. We're excited, people. I just, I just hope, uh, I hope you guys didn't uh, have a heavy lunch, greasy lunch. We, we got, we got, you know, combat tricks are for noobs. Uh, yeah, maybe just, people don't like moment. Yeah, them. you know, some people say combat tricks are for noobs. Those people also say that effective mana cost is a synonym for losing the game. I don't quite agree with those people. Obviously, mm. opinions are opinions, mm, Jeff. Yeah. But and, and most of your opinions are their opinions are wrong. wrong. Yeah, and obviously. But our, you know, we're, we're respectful. <laughs> yeah, um, we're respectful. So, yeah, so you know. if you have, if you have a feeling there, you have a feeling there. That's okay. So I'm gonna go over my first card. Um, it's called the Spire Winder. Uh, it's a four drop, flying, and if it, if you ascend, it gets plus one plus one. It's a two three. So kind of expensive. You know. Four mana, four, four mana flyer, flyer, pretty good. Three. If you get a send, a three four flyer. So you know, you know so. and uh, you know, a send. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I like the uh, the ascend mechanic all yeah, that much. Yeah, yeah. with you, it's it's. If you build around it, it really stinks if you don't get it because most of the cards that have ascend, uh, four ascend are, are mediocre, usually under curve. Uh, there are some like rare ones I think that we're probably well, we might run into, or some uncommon ones that. Uh, that are good cards, uh, but they become much better cards with Ascend, and I just, I don't like basing my strategy on getting right. Ascend. Yeah, um, and I've talked to some of the, the Twitch folks here who have actually gone to pre-release events, and, you know, they said they've been able to Ascend to Super Saiyan either, like, every other game sometimes, yeah. sometimes even less than that, so... Well, that's the thing. If you're playing someone who isn't working towards Ascend, uh, then it's going to work out for you a lot easier, but it just depends on who you're playing uh, and if they're going for it as well. It's right. not that hard to get 10 permanents, but... It, if you're racing someone else, I don't like flipping the coin in that race scenario because there are a lot of things that can happen that can ruin that for you. Exactly. And that's why I'm not a huge fan of it. Mm, yeah. Um, negate. So we have Negate. It's a two drop. Uh, easy. Target. Uh, counter. Target. Non-creature spell. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Two drop. I don't think we need to show that, but I guess we do. Yeah, so we want to see the art. Real the real art's quick. pretty nice. The art's dope um, on that. Um, lots of beautiful colors in there. Yeah. Uh, and we do have some flavor text. Mark, do you want to get into yeah, the flavor text? I will, I will read the flavor text, because I, for one, think flavor text is actually the most important part of a card. Um, so here we go. Yeah. As one, nature lifts its voice to tell you this. No. So, Ooh. Ooh, so kinda, it's just like slap in the face, like, no, yeah, get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. Nature is smacking you down. Get out of here. Get out. All right. Uh, so we actually, our, our next two cards are the same, oh, so we don't have to talk about it yeah. once. So it's a Oraska Raptor. It's a, it's a four drop, dino, three, four. Um, so decent stats, not great, but, uh, but you know, it gets out of the way of lightning strike, so that's, yeah. that's kind of nice. Uh, and I'll read the flavor text this sure, time, because this one actually do. has some please pretty wordy flavor text. Yeah. I'm into it. Uh, if you come across a raptor in the city, stay perfectly still. At least then you'll be well rested when you die. Yeah. So this guy, uh, you know, common card, uh, maybe gonna come in and kill you though. It's bigger than a lot of the bodies we see in like stronger tribes like merfolk or uh, or vampires. So it can actually be a useful card. Probably not something you're you're looking to build around or anything like that, yeah. but it can be useful in a red deck if you need a, a little bit larger body than some of your opponents are using. Um, yeah, and before we go to Jeff's next card, I'm just gonna say I got I got a moment of triumph too. So our, our pack ones are looking you know pretty similar here. Oh yeah, look at and that. And uh, my next card is actually a sailor of memes. So this is just kind of like a a, a very cowardly move on a wizard. You know, I love wizards. I think they're great, but yeah. they kind of just took some of the cards from Mixlon. And they're just like, hey, we're gonna reprint them mm -hmm. uh, for the sake of balance, draft, blah blah blah. I don't want to hear it. I you know, it. just pretty, uh, make a sailoress of memes or yeah. something, or make so, uh, you know a, a different card and change up the cost a little bit. You know, add some flavor. Add we'll some talk variety. about this because there are some cards. Uh, there's like one card. You know, maybe I can see the reasoning, but things like sailor means stuff like that. It's yeah. like, you know, I, I, we see what you're trying to do with it, uh, but the problem is you can just print a new card uh, that has different stats that that gets at the same ability yeah. that you're looking to. To promote is exactly. this like this is an ascend helper i believe is what they're trying to do with the treasure and that's fine but just make a different card that produces treasure instead of just reprinting don't get lazy on us here we're fanboys we're excited yeah. we want new cards yeah speaking of treasure um our, we're on the mobile team they're they're a treasure and i actually forgot to post this to the the mobile uh core and whichever one has uh the new guy in it matt b uh so can someone just post this link in there because uh we yeah. told them we'd send him a link and i forgot um, so just someone post it in there, maybe Joe NRB or Nick Heavy, just post in that mobile core, mobile eng chat. Um, also, for all our viewers, um, probably a lot of you already work at Twitch, maybe one or two of you don't. 
if that one or two of you, if you have iOS skills, if you're, you know, if you know all about bracket, brackets, Objective C, you're you're into putting at symbols between everything, or you're into Swift, you know, you're into like optionals and you know forcing this, unwrapping that. Go apply. Go apply on the website. Go apply. Go apply. Twitch.tv slash jobs. Um, when you're talking to the recruiter, let them know Gentleman's Draft pointed you here, uh, just so they can so just so they can hit us up with that referral bonus, um, and then we'll have you know. A ton of a ton of booster yeah. box gentlemen's draft with that bonus it'll be crazy so it'll probably be the first time in all of twitch history where a referral bonus will go to a stream oh that'd be pretty cool which is yeah. like pretty amazing so yeah. you know and if you if you're just watching and you have someone who knows ios um kick, them, know, kick them over our way kick them over our way kick them over in chat we'll talk to him we'll uh but back to the more, cards. Yeah, back to the cards. We got it. So, so we actually saw a moment of triumph where you a uh, creature gets plus two, plus two, and you gain two life. Now we have a moment of creating Ooh. where a target creature gets minus two, minus two, uh, and you get two life. So again, playing into that uh, vampire synergy with gaining life, uh, but instead this is actually acting as a removal as opposed to a combat trick buffer. Uh, but still, I think, uh, again, another useful card to drop uh, for potential removal on smaller creatures. I personally like it. Uh, yeah. And then if you are playing vampires, you are looking for life gain. This is a good source of cheap life gain. Yeah, and then my next card, um, pretty cool. It's Night of Stampede, it's four mana. Um, it's a two four for yeah. four, but it's effect is dinosaur spells you cast cost two less to cast. So, oh, so you might think it's expensive, but you know what, a lot of the dinos, especially the uh, yeah, like we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, we'll see a poly, polymorph trap here. That'd yeah, be cool. that'd be that'd be uh, awesome. I would go. But, I'd go nuts. Yeah, I mean, this card is going to help you get some of those bigger dinos out on the board faster. It's actually a pretty decent body at two four. Uh, so you know, you kind of get some blocks in, blocks on the more aggressive decks until you can use its ability to help you cast bigger dinos ahead of curve. So I actually, you know, again, not a build around card, but if you, it looks like you're getting some good big body dinos that. Uh, you want to start building around. This might be a card you can incorporate to make those dinos a little bit cheaper, especially if you're going tricolor dinos uh, and you want to bring, uh, you know, try to help your mana pool a little bit uh, with this guy, which I like. Um, next up, we actually have another instant. Uh, it's called Aggressive Urge. It's two drop, um, and target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, and then you draw a card. So, kind of along the same lines of the uh, moment cards that we saw already. You know, you're buffing a creature and then you're getting some. Uh, kickback. Uh, in this case, you're drawing a card as opposed to gaining life. Depending on the tribes you're in, one might be better than the other. I personally am always much happier with uh, a card draw to help out your hand to help get to those cards you want to get to. But again, in a vampire synergy type of deck, uh, you may want to get to uh, you know buffing up your life since you use a lot of life abilities. Just posting in the Slack, I don't think any of our you know awesome viewers are uh, helping us out there. Came through on it, so that's all right. I that's all right. Did it. No worries. Um, You'll be forgiven this time. Oh, I'm mean, gonna have to scroll all the way to the bottom. We are we are trending upward. We're trending. We're trending. Um, but next up, uh, we have a card called Water Knot. It's a three drop, uh, two blue, and uh, one of any color. You enchant a creature, and when wa when Water Knot enters the battlefield, uh, tap an enchanted creature, and that creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Uh, so a card to kind of bind up your opponent and basically say, hey, you can't attack with this card anymore. Um, kind of nice. They might be able to use some sort of ability cards. I don't know if there are any ability cards that are really kind of untap your creature. There, there may be some um, in there. If we run across them, we'll point them out. Uh, but the main thing here is even if it gets untapped and then they attack with it again, it's not going to untap again. So um, it's going to be hard to make that creature useful for your opponent. Um, they can still use abilities. There's nothing to say that they can't use abilities unless it's a tap ability, of course. But uh, in this case, you know, a nice uh, pseudo removal card for you to use. And then uh, my next card is actually Recover. It's a three drop, and Sorcery Speed, return target creature from your graveyard to your hand, draw a card. Um, so for three mana, getting a card back from your graveyard, drawing a card, you know, depends on what kind of deck you're rolling, but you know, in my not hypothetical now, Blue Black Pirates deck, you know, for three for three mana, they'll bring back, say, my Hostage Taker, yeah. or eventually my Dire Fleet Poisoner, which will be the, the cream of the crop for my card, uh, for my deck, or even, or even my Scarab God. Um, Ooh. You know, it might be good just to have a, maybe on the sideboard if this person's running a lot of removal, just be like, hey, you can remove, but I can recover. It's true, yeah. And so, uh, 
important thing here is that it really is dependent upon what you're putting in your graveyard. Pretty much a small body cards in your graveyard, no big bombs. Maybe it's not the best thing for you to play, but if you have those bombs that you're worried about losing uh, to some of the removal spells, hopefully we'll run across, uh, it's worth playing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Then my next card, it's a pretty trash card, Traveler's Amulet. Uh, costs one, you pay one, right? You have to pay one, then pay another one. Yeah. And you basically sacrifice it. You search for a basic land, you put it in your hand. Um, I don't think it's great. It's um, a mana fix. So it's a mana fix. It depends. Yeah. This set uh, kind of lends itself to maybe doing a, a tricolor decks, uh, which you which you may want to may want to go for. I think personally, searching for a specific land card uh, can be useful in a lot of scenarios, especially if you're. Uh, falling behind your opponent. This is a mana fixer for you. Yeah, so uh, that's we're saying it's a great card. LOL. Cool. Um, you're probably right. Um, I'm not actually the, the knowledge man here. I'm the hype man. That's okay. Um, you know what? Yeah. In a lot of cases, this may be useless for you if you have a really easy mana. Like, if your uh, mana pool is... Yeah, stuff. actually, you know, every deck I build has zero mana issues. So uh, these zero cards, mana issues. These cards, through the lenses of my eyes, you know, I see the world through these lenses. It's just... It's just I don't need it. It's true. I don't need it. One you know? thing you can see though is that this does get out. Uh, do you put it in your hand or do you put it into the battlefield? You put it. You put it into your hand. Okay. So I was gonna say you shuffle you your it, library. If you put it into, your, into the battlefield, uh, a little bit more powerful because you get out mana faster. Um, in this case, uh, not so much. But if you don't have any mana in your hand, this may uh, may help fix it. Yeah. Our wonderful viewer Esper said it comes off initially as something that doesn't seem good, but it's very helpful. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm inclined to agree. You yeah. know. In certain cases, I can definitely see its uses. Um, next up, I have Squire's Devotion. It's an enchantment aura, an en enchanted creature. Uh, it gets plus one, plus one, and then it has life link. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you also create a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token that has life link as well. So this, again, plays into the vampire uh, tribal, where basically you're trying to gain life and then use life abilities. Uh, go wide on the board with a lot of these one one vampire tokens. So I actually uh, I like this card if you're playing vampires. Uh, we'll see. So far, uh, I feel like I have a lot of uh, vampire cards here. Uh, yeah. I was hoping for some mirror folk, but uh, yeah. you know we'll see what happens here with these next couple decks. Yeah. Speaking of vampire, uh, my next card is Martyr of Dusk. It's a two drop, and it's two one. And when it dies, it creates a one one vampire creature token with lifelink. So I think a pretty cool card uh, just for two mana. You get a two one, and when it dies. You get a token. Yep. So, I like that card. Um, yeah. Whether it's good or not, who knows? Um, but he also looks cool. He he kind of looks like he's he's exploring yeah. places. And I feel like Rivals did a better job with uh, adding some better abilities, basically, to the card. So I like this ability of dying and then something happening afterwards. Uh, it kind of punishes your opponent even just a little bit for killing this creature. So um, yeah, I like it. You know, it gives some. Uh, it makes losing this creature not as bad as it could be. And then there are a lot of synergies around those vampire tokens uh, that this could play into very well. As a two drop, it gets out early. Maybe you have some bigger uh, cards that play into uh, you know, token abilities or, or affecting other vampires. Uh, then your token becomes more powerful. So there are a lot of things you could do there. Uh, I like this card a lot as a two drop, especially as a common. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, I have one drop, Mutiny. Uh, target creature and opponent controls deals damage equal to its power to another creature that player controls. So um, basically, you're using uh, your opponent's creatures to fight uh, themselves. And so you can actually take uh, the cases where you can't really do much on the board. You have this one drop, you uh, and you use it to kill something that your opponent has to really, you know, kind of take some life out of them, take them, take the momentum out of their game. Uh, so I like it. It's not something I'm going to like play a bunch. It's not something I'm going to be super excited about. But uh, if you're looking for uh, a removal card, this is kind of a pseudo removal card. It should help you out, yeah. Yeah, and uh, our uh, probably our most handsome viewer, Nikebi, just said, Munity is so tilting. And then he says something else after, it doesn't matter. But yeah, yeah. Munity is mm -hmm. in fact so mm -hmm. tilting. But I like Munity. I think yeah. Munity is just a better card than Munity. Yeah, so almost there, Nikebi. I'd, 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 give that, I'd give that comment rank A. A. Not S, rank A comment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. A tier, not S tier. A tier, not, not S tier. Uh, next up, we have a two drop uh, Shatter, Destroy Target Artifact. Pretty much a useless card in my eyes. Uh, side deckable if you're really worried about your opponent having a very strong artifact. There are some flip cards that, that turn into really strong artifacts. But in most cases, I'm not looking to play this card very much. Um, but again, there are cases where you, you are going to want to go after an artifact that essentially wins your opponent the game. So. 
Um, sideboard this maybe if you're playing red, and uh, and hope you don't have to use it. Ooh, that's San Pellegrino. Yeah, this thirst quench. Yeah, we've been talking a bunch, and the San Pellegrino in front of me was just literally calling out to me. Calling out uh, your name. And uh, you know, it it tasted great. Um, another comment from one of our great viewers, Alec is testing Twi. Kevin only loses to Mutiny because he's never lucky. Um, ooh, I. I've hung out with me, Kevy, a few times. He's a pretty lucky guy. He does claim he's unlucky, but he's actually really lucky. One time he beat me at Smash Bros. That was pretty lucky. Yeah, that's pretty lucky, because I hear he's like... No, dude, he's top 4K. I'm top, like, 12K. So oh, he's top he's, 4K? Wow. He's better. He's wow, better, for that, sure. That's a super high ELO. Dude, dude, um, very high ELO. So, uh, I'm going to go through two of mine now. Yeah. Um, Dark Inquiry, 3-drop, Sorcery. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. You know what use I think this would be great just to sideboard for? Mm -hmm. Uh, there's that OP new black dino. Oh, that, yeah. That kind of says you, you reveal from your hand, put prey counters on things. Like, someone's doing that to you, and you suddenly get this. Um, you know what's in their hand. Yeah. You know, you know. So it's like. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Any of those, any of those uh, reveal strategies, those cards that, that ask you to reveal something uh, to, to trigger some sort of ability, this, 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 uh, this would counter it. Yeah, this helps out with that so, a lot. Yeah. You know, obviously, you can do a straight up creature spell counter. Yeah. Um, especially if they're trying to get that card out as soon as they can, they're going to do it as soon as they have the mana. They're not going to have enough mana to counter it with like a, a counter counter. Um, so, you know, pretty cool. After that, Soul of the Rapids is a five drop, takes two water droplets and then three of anything. It's a creature, it's flying, three, two, hexproof. And, um, you know, how do you feel about this card, Jeff? Uh, it seems a little underpowered for how much you're playing, but you do have Hexproof and Flying, so those two abilities uh, are helpful and they make it kind of a, uh, annoying for your opponent to get off the board. So, in the right circumstances, I like this card. Uh, it's, again, not something that I'm super excited to, to play, but uh, in a lot of cases it can be very useful for you because of how difficult it is for your opponent to interact with, with that Flying and with Hexproof. Uh, and then my last common card... Uh, is Gleaming Barrier, which is a two-drop, zero-four defender, uh, and when it dies, you create a color uh, colorless treasure token. Um, so, uh, pretty mad card, uh, but it is cheap, and it is going to put up a wall uh, for a lot of those smaller creatures that your opponent might be trying to get out if they're doing an aggressive run, an aggressive play. And so, uh, this can help out in those scenarios. Again, not something that I think uh, I'm excited about, something that I really want to play a whole lot of, but um, if I'm trying to bide my time to get out some bigger boys uh, against an aggressive opponent, um, this is a useful card in that scenario. Yeah, totally. Yep. So that's all our commons. So. All common cards. So nothing, nothing super exciting, um, but nothing, nothing terrible either. I'd say. Yeah. So I'm gonna power through my uncommons now. Then we'll yeah. power through Jeff's uncommons. Perfect. And then we'll do our, our rare boy at the yeah. end. Um, so my first uncommons: Four Run of the Empire, Human Soldier, Four mm -hmm. Drop, One Three. When he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a dino card, reveal it, then shuffle your library and put that card on the top of it. Whenever a dinosaur enters the battlefield under your control, you may have four of the empire deal one damage to each creature. So, so uh, a couple of things at play here. Uh, first of all, every, I believe every color has a forerunner card that, mm. that speaks to a tribe in that color. Uh, this is the dino-related one in red. Uh, I like it a lot because it helps you bring up that big dino you're looking to play. Uh, on top of that, this is an enrage trigger. So, is what it can do is help you get to a big dino you want to play, and then trigger enrage for any dinos on the board uh, that that are that are already there that have cool abilities: uh, draw card abilities, deal damage abilities, life gain abilities. Um, there's one uh, that's a, it's a mythic rare that that creates copies of itself. Pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Gotta get the skills in. <laughs> yeah, and that Polymorph actually playing with Forerunner, uh, if we see Polymorph, that'd be awesome. But uh, basically, the, the, the creatures that it creates trigger that again. And so you can cre keep triggering those Polymorphs and create copy over copy over copy of themselves, uh, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, on top of that, a lot of creatures in this set uh, have one defense, uh, have one toughness. And so... Uh, they'll get killed by this card when this thing triggers. So uh, a lot of good things here at play. My next one is two drop Thunderherd Migration, sorcery as an additional cost to cast Thunderhead Migration. Reveal a dinosaur card from your hand. 
or pay one. Search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Um, so kind of kind of a mana fix. Yeah. Um, you know, you pay the two mana. Full card comes straight on the battlefield, which is pretty nice. Yeah. So if you have two free mana, you kind of just take care of it all then. Yeah. I think cards like this, I think, are aimed towards dinos, especially those those big green dinos. Uh, it's trying to help you get those dinos out faster. Uh, Merfolk, you don't really need it too much. Um, doesn't affect the board all that much with adding uh, one mana, but uh, if you are kind of struggling, this will help you out, um, and it will help you get out mana faster if you need it if you're looking for a big body. And then my last one common is Pride of Conquerors, two, two drop, instant speed, and creatures you control get plus one, plus one until the end of the turn, and if you have the city's blessing, again, the ascend mechanic, uh, they'll get plus two, plus two instead. So... Mm -hmm. So again, this is where Sun comes in. Uh, the card itself, I think, is pretty meh uh, to start out with, but with that Ascend, it helps it boost to a pretty solid card. So uh, this one, I think, it kind of depends on if you have Ascend or not as to whether or not this is yeah. pretty solid. And I actually think we have our, our first non-wrench person in the chat, yeah. Craig Family 7101. Welcome. I uh, hope you're enjoying the show. Um, yeah. Let us know if you have any questions or anything. We're, we're here. So yeah, so those are my uncommons. I got nice. one more, but we're gonna go through Jeff's. Card. All right, I'm gonna flip uh, my rare away. Uh, so first card we have here uh, for my uncommons is Flood of Recollection. Um, this is actually one of the story cards, and it's Ooh. when Jace, uh, all his memories come back. How Vraska was basically, you know, his enemy. Yeah. Uh, Dodge was his friend. You know. Yeah, they were kind of, they were kind of getting it. They, yeah. were, kind of, they were starting to like little really buddy, get close. Budding romance. Yeah, yeah budding so romance here. We're not actually uh, experts on lore, but we do have lore experts in the house. And if they want to come down and talk to this lore, uh, talk yeah. about lore, uh, they're more than welcome. Yeah, we're probably um, killing it, but it's all right. It's not. It's, all right. it's not. It's not our forte. Uh, so this card is it. Uh, two islands, and for those two islands, uh, you return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand, uh, and then you exile uh, Flood of Recollection. So in interesting, if you have a uh, very powerful uh, sorcery or instant, you can get it back. I, I'm not a huge fan of these like get the card back kind of cards because essentially you're paying to just get something back and then you have to pay again to play it. Uh, that card has to be very, very good for me to want to go into my graveyard and actually uh, go and grab that uh, and have to pay to do that. So, mm, not a huge fan. Uh, this next card though, I, I do actually very much like. Uh, it's a two drop. Um, it's called Relentless Raptor uh, and it has Vigilant. Um, when it attacks or block, oh, it uh, attacks or blocks each combat if able. Three, uh, three, three body vigilance. Uh, basically, you're attacking and blocking every turn with this vigilance creature. Uh, but you get a three, three body out for two, way ahead of curve. Vigilance is nice because boom, you're attacking every turn, uh, and hopefully early on in the game, your opponent doesn't really have much to deal uh, to uh, to handle this guy. So you're either killing smaller creatures or you're getting the damage through. Uh, so I like that. I, I would play that uh, yeah. a lot if I'm playing a red-white deck. Uh, and then my final uh, uncommon is a two-drop Merfolk Silvergill Adept. And basically, as an additional cost to Silvergill Adept, uh, you reveal a Merfolk from your hand, or you pay three extra. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a 2-1 body, and then when it enters the battlefield, you also get to draw a card. So most of the time, you're looking for Merfolk Synergy, you're gonna show them the Merfolk, that's fine, you get this guy out, and then you get to draw another card. Uh, so actually a really fun card to play, a great card, a uh, Merfolk card that I'm excited to play in draft formats for sure. And then we'll step on to uh, Mark's rare. Step on to my rare boy. First so rare. my rare boy is a seven drop. Ooh. Um, Nezahal, Primal Tide. Oh no, so he got one of the Primal. He's an Elder Dino. I have Elder Dino. So he's a blue Elder Dino, which is kind of weird. Uh, Dino, it's exciting, board. man. That's a big body. That's a fun card. Yeah, so he's a 7-7. Seven, seven. He can't be countered. My hand has no maximum size. And whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, I draw a card. And then if I discard three cards, I can exile Nezahal, Hall, return it to the battlefield tap under its owner's control at the beginning of the next step. So... Kind of get it out of the way of any sort of removal. You can go in and block uh, or attack if they they block with a bunch of stuff. You can get it off the board and then get it right back. Um, so, but yeah, so no, I actually that, that's an exciting card. It's a pretty fun bomb, I think. Uh, so definitely yeah. an exciting first. Rare there, card. there was a, a fish card in Ixalan that had the same no 
no hand, like no maximum hand size, right? Yeah, there is a, a Murpho card. Uh, the blue one. It's like the water, the fish in the water. Uh, so actually, yeah, yeah, you're right. And there's yeah. like another draw seven card. Basically, it's a uh, its power of toughness are equal to your hand size. Right, yeah, right. Something like that. And my rare card, ooh, is Tender Shot Dryad. Ooh. So I think one of the better cards in this set. Uh, it's five mana for two two body, which doesn't sound great. Uh, the ascent mechanic here, though, is very nice. Um, and then its regular ability is at the beginning of each upkeep, you create a 1-1 one, one Sapperling creature token. Uh, if you have ascent, Sapperlings you control get plus two, plus two. So this is pushing you into ascend by creating those tokens, which is great uh, in and of itself. Uh, it actually helps you get to ascend. Uh, but then the ability to buff up those, uh, those Sapperlings that you're creating with this card, once you hit ascend, is even better. It makes this card fantastic. Uh, it can be targeted by a bunch of different things. 2-2 two, two, uh, falls away to a bunch of removal. Uh, even one of the two drops that we saw before, I believe it was, yep, this guy, Moment of Craving. So it's pretty easy to get off the board, but uh, if you can get it out, if you can get it to play up to Ascend, uh, this is a great card. Yeah, so it seems like uh Nikevi's a little hot for the for the primal dino I got, but you know, Nikevi, don't worry. We're we're just starting. We're you know, X rivals just came out. I'm definitely willing to trade. Um, we're gonna be having another stream definitely on Friday. We're gonna oh, yeah. open a big booster box of, of rivals. So you know, probably gonna get a lot of good cards there. And uh, you know, part of got the same one. Yeah. So, right. so yeah. Right, pack two. So yeah, we're gonna open up our vampire, our lusting. Uh, vampire over here. Oh, yeah, and sorry, I cut Mark off. Well, what he's saying is that we're gonna have a booster box opening on Friday, yeah, and, it's and we're really be, excited about it. Yeah, it's gonna be sick. Um, uh, and we might not, in that stream, spend so much time on uh, all the cards, but because we're again trying to also build maybe a pre-release deck out of these, uh, we want to talk about the cards and figure out which ones we actually want to play. Yeah. So, so real quickly, um, I actually got an Ar Araska Raptor again. So no need to talk about that guy. Another body. moment of triumph. Oh man, man, dupes. A sailor of memes. Oh my God, trip dupe. And I'm just gonna go. How about we just go through our deck and just anything we've seen, we can just pull them out to the front, just to kind of get those all out in the beginning. Jeff, what do you think about yeah, that? I uh, I am 100. And then Jeff got one of these. Jeff actually got these, so I got two. I got three that I got before, and then I got two Jeff got. So I got Moment of Craving. Um, so the yin to the yang, that is Moment of Triumph. And then you got Aggressive Verge too, right? Uh, I did, yeah. Okay, so yeah, Jeff also uh, got an Aggressive Verge, so. I'm 100% pretty fresh. Cool. So I'm 100% fresh. I got, fresh I got here. five not fresh cards, so why don't you take, take my, it away and, and tell us about some of your cards? All my right? commons are fresh cards, so let's get into it. Uh, First, we have Swagger and Corsair, so it's a three-drop, two-two body, and it has Raid um, as a pirate. Uh, Swagger and Corsair enters the battlefield with plus one, plus one counter on it if you attack with the creature this turn. So that Raid mechanic that we saw uh, come back in Ixalan, I believe it was a mechanic that existed before in another set, um, comes here, basically you get a three-three body, you play with three if you attack with the creature this turn. Um, you're always going to try to get this out with a one-one on it. Let's show the people. Yeah. Um, I, I fun, like the card. Fun I, fact, my, my two tokens also both Merkel. Whoa! But uh, the art on the back is different. Oh, uh, is that a spoiler? Do we have a spoiler? Uh, actually, those are from two packs, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, cool. Yeah, next up, we have a card that we actually saw in Ixalan. This is the one card that makes sense maybe as a reprint. I'm still not a huge fan of, uh, of it being a reprint, but Legion Conquistador. Uh, so basically, you can go find your other Legion Conquistadors when you play one of these guys. Uh, they wanted to keep that that uh, that kind of synergy between the, these same cards around. I'm not a huge fan of keeping this card around. I don't really think it's worth it that much, but uh, a lot of people do. Um, so we can agree to disagree. I'd rather just see a fun new white vampire card. But, agreed. Agreed. Uh, next up, we have uh, Sea Legs, which is a one drop, just an island. It has flash. Uh, you enchant a creature, and then the enchanted creature gets plus zero, plus two, as long as it's a pirate. Otherwise, it gets minus two, minus zero. So uh, you either target your opponent who doesn't have pirates, uh, and you kind of take some some punch away from one of their creatures, or you buff up one of your pirates in defense uh, to try to block one of their bigger creatures. So um, can be useful, uh, not a great play, but uh, something that can, that can be useful to play in certain scenarios. Uh, next up we have Recover, which is a three drop sorcery, return target creature from your graveyard to your hand draw card. We saw this one. Okay, okay. okay. so we yeah. did get a dupe. Mark has this card. We'll just flash it here real quick. Yeah. Just to 
Uh, next up, a new card, Plummet, which is a two-drop uh, destroy target creature with flying. So, um, a specific uh, removal card to target flying creatures. But you know what? If there's a flying creature on the board and you have no flyers, that's a pain. And you probably want to work this card into your deck. Uh, or just work some flying creatures into your deck. But uh, in certain scenarios, if you don't have a lot of flyers or any flyers and your opponent's coming out and hitting you in the face with a bunch of flyers and play this card, maybe sideboard it. I don't think it's worth playing in main deck. Um, but definitely something to work into the game if you're playing uh, someone who's killing you with flyers. Uh, next up, we have a four drop, Dust Charger. So it's a 3-3 uh, three, three body, but with Ascend, uh, it gets plus two, plus two. Um, so, again, this is one of those cards. Meh, four drop, three, three, no special effects or anything like that. Whatever, if you don't have uh, if you don't have the city's blessing. But as soon as you get the city's blessing, it becomes a five, five for four. Uh, a little bit of bump curve there, and uh, you want to play it. So if you're working really hard to get the city's blessing through the send, then uh, work this in maybe. Um, but I don't know. I, I'd kind of just be shooting for smaller bodies uh, to build up to uh, yeah. ascension for my bigger, my my, bigger guys. My major game strategy is, you know, I don't want things to go <laughs> past, like, turn six or seven. I'm going to kind of, like, get out there, take, dispatch my enemies quickly. So, you know, I, I probably will never get the key to the city. You know? Oh, man. City's, city's blessing. Yeah. I call it the key to the city. The key to the city. The to the city you know, you... I like it. I like it. Uh, next up, we have a one-drop Dino, uh, zero three body, um, Snubhorn Sentry. Uh, it also has a send, so it's a zero three. But as soon as you get the city's blessing, it gets plus three in attack, so it becomes a one-drop three three. This is one of the cards that turns, in, you know, it's a fine card to get out on turn one. It does help you get to the city's blessing faster because it's a cheap card to get out, block your opponents who are getting things out and attacking you early. But then it turns into a great card if you have the city's blessing as a three three body four one. Um, again, if that's something I'm going for, I'm playing this card uh, pretty easily. Uh, we have our second reprint in this uh, particular pack for me, Colossal Dreadmaw. This is one of those creatures that I just don't understand why we're seeing at the end. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of confusing myself. We can we can. I'd love to see another six drop uh, Dino that just does something different. Um, maybe something with an enrage trigger. I feel like there aren't a lot of great dinos with Enrage. It doesn't even have to be a great dino with Enrage. It's going to be a mediocre six drop dino with yeah. Enrage or like a four drop, I don't know. But Anything. I just don't want to see Colossus Dreadmaw uh, yeah. again. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's a It's a mad card. I don't really yeah. understand why we're, why we're replaying it. Um, next up, a two drop uh, that I actually like, uh, Kite Cell Corsair. Uh, it's a 2 1, uh, 4 2, and it has flying as long as you're attacking with it. Um, so again, this is to really just get. Uh, Get damage in on your opponent. You're going to try to avoid blocking with this if you can. I can't block other flyers, so it's pretty limited there. But I like it to get in early damage on your opponent, especially if they don't have anything that can deal with those flyers. Yeah, on the Colossal Dreadmaw comment, we have a comment from Nikebi who said, or maybe a six-drop dino with trample hexproof that can't be countered. Um, um, well, I, I believe we already saw that. Uh, yeah. That is called Carnage Tyrant. Yeah, so um, Nikebi... Try me a little original, yeah. you're actually just accessing memories of other cards, and you're using that to try to suggest original cards. You know what, maybe, um, maybe, that, maybe that happened with Wizards. Maybe they're just like, I don't know what the yeah. so well, This sounds like a great idea. So it's we're going to have our first, our first guest coming in. Um, Eric, welcome. Hi. Welcome to the Gentleman's Draft. Um, okay. Have a seat here. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna blast through this last common card yeah. real quick. We have Jade Bear. Uh, it's a one-one Merfolk. Uh, when Jade Bear enters the battlefield, you put a one-one counter on another Merfolk that you control. So one-one uh, for one is fine. The ability to buff up another Merfolk, great. Uh, the only problem is you're gonna want like kind of for me if I see a one drop, I wanna play on turn one, right? And that in this case, it doesn't actually help buff anything. But the nice thing is later on in the game. If you run across this one drop, it's still useful to buff up other creatures on the board. Uh, so it's always helpful throughout the game. And there are some uh, Merfolk cards uh, that actually buff up all the Merfolk you have. And in that case, this card is still very useful for you in late game. Yeah, one thing that kind of irritates me about this card is the person's very symmetric. They're kind of like this, but they're actually not centered in the center of the card. You see, they're oh, kind of a little this way. Um, Kind of a deal breaker for me. I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, card art very important to me. So you see, it's kind of it's 
that tenant to the side, you know, or it's just, it's, yeah, it's, it's not You there. don't think it's like a profile pic? So it's yeah. like, it's upset. It's like it's upset. It's, it's so if, if we're going for some it. synergy, we or uh, symmetry, we need all yeah. symmetry. So those are Jeff's comments. So I'm gonna go through my comments now. Um, we have naturalize here, which is kind of just a big. It looks like a a, a looming big dino foot. Big yeah, dino looming foot. Hairs, or, uh, Lo not the, is it the looming altosaur? Yeah, he's yeah. not green. He's white, right? Mm. Raging bron raging brontodon. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, brontodon, the, the big bronto boy. But anyhow, two drops to destroy a target artifact or creature. You know, if you have a sideboard material, right? You know, yeah, sideboard material. You, know, you can't sure. you can't count on your opponent having artifacts. Um, now this card looks cool. Um, Grasping scoundrel, one Ooh. drop, one one, gets plus one attack as long as it's attacking. So. so Pretty cool. Yeah. He looks kind of kind of sleazy, um, you know. What do you expect from these pirates? You know. Yeah. What do you, what do you think? I mean, what do you think about this guy? I mean, it's it's a very it's a two one effect with their Cassandra. Yeah. Uh, so I actually think this one, one drop one I like it. is actually not a bad one drop at all. No, you should no, only I, play a one one drop on turn one. Yeah, no, right? that's that's so, what I'm saying. And like you're saying, besides the yeah, art, it's yeah. a great card. It, it kind of stinks you lose out on the ability. Play a turn one, but then if you have more in your in your deck, but it's like having an option, right? Right, right. Like so that's what I'm saying. One one plus another two power, two full, two two for one mana is very strong. Right, so right. It's effectively, it's a two two for one mana if you play any other turn to turn one. So it's right, like an yeah. option. Right? That's what I'm saying. Early on, it's nice to get a creature out yeah. of turn one, but then so, later on, it's nice to buff up a creature. But yeah. actually, any turn but turn one, right? Because yeah. on turn two, right. if you have some other one drop or just drop it, right? Like if you have two of them, you end up with. A one one and a two two for Yeah, I'd say the effective mana cost of that card or the effective value of it's kinda effective mana cost might be negative one. Might be negative one, so it might actually be very valuable. Ooh, that'd be a very valuable card. Yeah. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how it plays. Yeah, so my next my next comment is I mean if you're playing as and as you're playing a speed deck, I think it's actually you're playing a lot of I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Solid versus solid solid comment, yeah. My next card is Secrets of the Golden City. Uh, draw two cards. If you have the city's blessing, draw three cards instead. So, you know, four mana, two water droplets. Uh, or sorry, three mana, three mana, with two water droplets. Um, you know, drawing two cards. You know, I don't know if I play this. Um, you know, I usually have I usually have the heart of the cards on my side, so I'm never really fixing to draw more cards. Um, but what do you guys think? You know, from, from a more like you know, from your level of play, what do you guys think about that card? I don't know. I mean, it's fine. I, I like being able to draw two cards if you need to get to, to bigger cards if you're kind of playing uh, maybe a more control -y deck. Um, the fact that you get a City's Blessing and, and you get another you get another draw is kind of nice, but not a card I'm, I'm super pumped to play, really. I think it's really strong. As long as you have the amount of support in. Because if you look at other... I'm just trying to frame a reference. As a full disclosure, I, you know, I'm kind of like... Uh, I have a lot of experience from way back, and then the more recent times, sort of like the more sporadic player, right? So, but a frame of reference, uh, there was a reasonable but slow control card, I think, in these. You usually draw two cards with no drawback, but you get to keep both cards, you just cost four. Although, it's, I think Inspiration is an older card, one blue. Obviously, formats have sped up and so on. So, the drawback is you have to be, you can't splash if you fit into blue, but two blue for three mana total for two cards, plus the ability to draw three cards late game, and you have City's Blessing, right, is really strong. If you if you hit for three and you're not, like, about to die, that is, like, that is a game changer limit. Like, if you're in a deadlock situation and you get, you drop that, at, or even, like, reasonably stabilized and draw three cards for three mana, that's really good. And it's not, I mean, I guess the only issue is that City's Blessing is it's fairly late game, like, you probably, it has to be, like, like average scenario, I imagine it's like turn seven or eight, which is fairly deep in the game, but that's where three cards will make a ton of difference, assuming you're reasonably stabilized and not about to die in a turn or two. Um, and three mana is really cheap. Like you could probably, if you have City's Blessing, chances are you have like six or seven mana on the table, right? Or five or six mana at, at some point of four or five permanents. So you probably have like, you have six mana, you have three mana left over, so chances are you can play a land and something else from your hand. That's like, it's, it's a game changer. I would play. It's a common, I imagine. The only it, the drawback is a sorcery sheet, but it's a card draw, so yeah. yeah. I know. I think it's good. I think I'd run like 
Depending on the deck, I might run two of those because they're so strong. I can I can imagine going that like early, but I guess the double blue is significant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah and then, um, dig through time. Is, oh, maybe that's the name of the card. Dig through time. Dig through time is a newer is a newer card that I think does more stuff than just. I think it might have a scry. I'm thinking like the old the original card like this is one blue and three called inspiration. I think that okay. draws two for four. I think if I. Dig through time, I think it's newer. I think it might have some sort of scribe effect in it. Gotcha. So, my next common card, I think, is actually a bomb. Yeah. It's a two drop enchant called Tenali's Crown. Basically, when Tenali's Crown enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to an enchanted creature. So, trigger that enraged mechanic. Yep. And the enchanted creature gets plus three, plus zero, and has trample. So, yeah. So, Buff up a smaller body, hopefully it has enrage, yeah, and uh, trigger some sort of ability, and then boom, it's a bigger boom, body a big also. Boy, yeah. You might have a medium-sized boy, you might have a small boy. Boom, boom, boom. You go up the scale of sizes, and things get, yeah. you know. Even for any big butt dinos, so, so dinos that have like kind of more toughness than, uh, than power, uh, this kind of helps out with that too. Um, yeah, fun card to play if you can uh, get it to actually uh, kind of trigger that enrage. I, I think you need enrage to use yeah. that card. Because yeah. with, without enrage, uh, you can't you can't use it on any of your weenies because it'll kill them. Yeah. Or, they'll, without, or any of your one toughness things, they'll die, right? Use it on anything else if you have to have a clear path, right? So the best case scenario is like if you're playing a beat down deck, you have tempo, you have like something with two toughness, you drop it on it, you do an extra three damage, you discard when they come over. Uh, you know, like if 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 there's anything in the way. They will block and probably kill whatever you have, right? And two for one, you, right? So, so it's not like, like a stand, like the other things, and like, you know, other enchantments. Like, well, this just shows how how old school I am. But if you like giant strength, right? Two mana for plus two plus two, the benefits, or even something that gives like one three, like I think conviction or whatever, is that they it gives them a big butt, and they could just nothing can block it because it'll, it'll it won't kill it, right? Unless so so you don't risk two for one at least in that immediate turn, right? So this thing, the challenge is that normally would go in a beatdown type deck, but if you don't have something with a two body, it's just a dead card, right? Yep. And then when you play it, you risk, when you do play it, chances are if they have mana on top or any trick or whatever, you risk giving up the two for one because it's, 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 it's enchantment speed, so they see it coming, you can play you know, any instant, you can disrupt it. So I don't, I wouldn't call it a bomb. It definitely has excellent synergy if you have, like, if you have a very strong chance of getting a rage. Without that, I, I guess I, I've scrolled through the spoilers like one and a half times, so mm -hmm. you'd have to look at how many early drops you have that have two toughness. Um, even so, just because it has two toughness, if they have any blocker, you probably cannot play it um, because if it doesn't have trample, it's just gonna get they're just gonna trade it for a two for one, right? Yeah. And, and well, even if you have a clear path, there's always a risk that next turn, you know, you're gonna lose a two for one any removal, which is not awful if you're just playing to run them over, but you can run out of gas really fast. Yeah, no, as a common, you're looking to, to kind of enhance something else that you've already kind of picked up in your draft probably before, something you've already picked. This is obviously not gonna be like your first pick, but it's gonna be something that you wanna go after, uh, maybe try to trigger that enrage mechanic and then buff something up well, a little bit. I was comparing to other like combat yeah. tricks or enhancements. Like if you compare that to the green, well, we'll look at it later. Yeah. I'll yeah. Just call that for reference. For other common tricks that give you card advantage, was that poses a risk of card disadvantage, but the enrage is great. My last common, Strider Armist, three drop, artifact. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one, and then it costs one to equip. Um, so, nah. yeah, it's plus one, plus one, nah. four. four. Um, you know, it'd be cool if like you could equip this on a dino for free because there's a dino in the picture. Kind of like, because yeah. you know how pirates cut this, right? Yeah. You could go buy a pirate and it's free, I think. Yeah, I think when it comes into the battle. When it comes into the battle, yeah, yeah, it'd be cool, pirate. so, you know. Um, this doesn't have that, even though there's a dinosaur in the picture. So I'd say like, there is some, there's, there's a dissonance between the picture and the text. Uh, but you know, I think the illustrating for, for the optimal usage though, right? Is you put it on dinosaur yeah, trample on and you trample over. Them. Oh, and it gets haste. Sorry, you get plus one plus one in haste. Yeah. Right. The haste is big actually. The the problem is the high casting cost, right? Yeah, I right. think. Or sorry. Yeah, I you know. need to go. yeah no. So fine. the optimal use is if you have like a like sort of, I guess, a tempo fatty deck, I think, or maybe, I guess you could sort of use a really awkward finisher, but probably if you're playing like a, like a pure beatdown deck, it's too slow, because it's like three plus one, and, in the, and you're probably playing tons of little creatures, and only have a couple of big creatures 
we're put on, and a lot of time it's not value for little creatures. What it is valuable for is playing a beatdown deck with, with, or if you're playing a tempo deck, like I guess the classic red green type thing, and you have like fatties that trample or aiming with green like dinosaurs. It's you. What happens is once you once when you get over the overhead, assuming you're stabilized or you seize tempo, you continue tempo because you just get one to just clobber them and to have like fall in every turn. Right, every time you put a mana a creature up, put an extra one, and it just runs them over. But it's tough because you need to have like a ramp deck, I guess, because then you could ramp and seize back tempo by pl effectively flashing out huge amounts of damage. Yeah. One case I saw this be very useful for uh, when when in MTG Online when they allowed uh, rivals to start being played uh, was that someone put it on the battlefield and then any creature that they cast they instantly attached it to it because they had enough mana and they they were kind of yeah. playing the smaller creatures, mm -hmm. and then they're attacking with everything on their. So if you're trying to punch through things, uh, it could be useful. In that yeah. Case. So I, it, my, it just my, my view is that like if you have lots of small creatures, it's the three overhead is pretty expensive. Yeah. I think maybe although who knows it could be I guess it could be kind of a little finisher kind of. I think I think you'd want something if you have like if you have to look at cards if you have to have a decent amount that can trample, you know, or at least a few like invasion type things like menace things that throws off the couple. You drop a menace and add one, and all of a sudden that thing gets through. Yeah, so uh, on to our uncommon cards. Uh, we have our first one here. It's actually an enchantment as well. Uh, sea Red, so it's a two drop. Uh, enchanted creature, that creature gets plus two, plus one, and has first strike. Uh, then at the beginning of your end step, if you didn't attack with a creature this turn, uh, it sacrifice Sea Red. So it does force you to attack every turn if you want to keep it on the board, but adding two, one, and first strike kind of helps you get through maybe on some, some bigger opponents. Uh, not great, but you know, uh, I think a fun play if you have smaller creatures and you need to kind of attack bigger or uh, block against bigger things or attack against bigger things. Um, oh, uh, we so have comments from Wumpkins. Uh, he's going amazing man, card. Good alert. card feels good, man. Good card, good card, amazing card alert. So Wumpkins is really big on it. He hit the caps lock key. He also said, "Is that our man Eric? He is his boy Eric." What's up? So it is, in fact, Eric. For you know, those of you who missed it when he came in, it's Eric. He's here to give us knowledge bombs. You've probably heard him, heard him dropping some knowledge bombs. The guy's packed with knowledge, um, and yeah, um, Wumpkins, the the it's our boy Eric smiling. Feels good, man. The caps lock key is engaged, or he might actually be he might actually be a madman, and he might be holding down the shift key oh, the whole God. time and typing. So. Yeah. That's for insane people. I think for sure. he is seeing red on, yeah. the, on the capitalization so, front. I think, yeah, was, yeah I, it's interesting. I, I, it does seem more solid. So the one key thing, I'm not sure it's clear, is that you can attack with, you don't have to attack with the creature in chance. Correct, yeah. Right, so as long as you attack with anything, you can even use it, uh, I mean, I guess, I mean, you generally wouldn't cast it after you, you attack with something. You would, you'd want to put punch it through and it would have first strike, but theoretically on later turns, don't have to necessarily sacrifice that card. Although right. it gives it first strike, so it's super hard to. It makes like plus two. Yeah, it makes first strike very hard to block. Very hard to block. So they need to probably need to answer the removal, especially in this key deck. Oh, I'm curious if, if if it's yeah, it's pretty good on vigilance, but I I wonder. I don't know. I mean, I don't know about amazing, but I think it's definitely better. No offense than than the uh, than the Triceradon. Whatever, whatever it was. No, no offense. <laughs> what was Ever that card? Oh, the Tenali's Crown. Yeah. Probably yeah. better than that. I mean, that's why it's uncommon, or not why, but it's indicated it's uncommon, right? Yeah. No worries. Because it's, I, it's, it's usable in many yeah. more situations. Nice. I'm, I'm nice. the master, I'm actually the master of misreads yeah. and misappropriation value. What I am a master of is affecting Omnicom. So it's true. A card like Contract Killing, um, I just have it here for reference. It actually hangs in my badge normally. It applies to so it's scary to come. I would just put it right there, just like I said. Five mana, but when you use it, it generates two treasure tokens, which each of those can be converted into mana. So the effective mana cost is, is three. Um, anyhow, um, so yeah. So I guess I guess Tenali's Crown. I guess right. I guess Tenali's Crown can can kill a one a one toughness guy. Yeah. So that's like a, yeah, that's like the time uh, I was one playing Wumpkins once and I. I forgot I could have used Vampire Zeal yeah. on his creature to then reach his judgment. But source, sorcery speed killed things for one toughness. It's pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty suboptimal. I mean, 
it's sort of like it's like two. It's like the SNL skit with like it's both the floor wax and a dessert topping. Yeah, like it's, it's unclear if it does. It's definitely probably do. It's like not the optimal. You could use it as a kill spell, but it's, it's, it's out of the box. Great. Out of the box usage, yeah. yeah. but sometimes you know. Yeah. It's good to always remember that that is. Yeah. Actually yeah. No, I mean it makes it does give it a little more. It does give it a little more. It's like the classic plus two minus one or plus three minus one type thing. You can you can kill it. I don't know. I guess yeah. Source you can things to kill for one. It depends on how many you want. I guess with the cards like like the the one one with there's enough. I guess there's a number of powerful one drops, yeah. right? Like the the what was that guy that gets plus one to the skeezy whatever? Oh, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the pirate yeah. sketchy. Well, yeah, yeah, so grasping yeah. scanner all. Yeah, skeezy whatever. Yeah. Let's try to blast through these last couple okay. cards though, because yeah, we're also gonna want to try to build a deck, and so we can okay. kind of like talk about those synergies yeah. a little bit more and how those cards can play yeah. together uh, when we get to that point. I think. Um, but yeah, uh, so next up we have a four drop uh, needle tooth raptor. It's a two two, but it has an enraged trigger. Uh, whenever it's dealt damage, it deals five damage to target creature and opponent control. So this is actually a good case uh, for that enchantment that deals one damage to it because it would make it a larger body, uh, give it trample. But then also kick off that deal five damage. So uh, this is a creature that like you put out on the board. It's a little expensive for the two-two body, but your opponent's gonna be pretty scared to block it for fear of that five damage coming back their way. Yeah, I mean it effectively. Um, it's not just scared to block it. It's like uh, it basically gives it like mega death touch. Yeah. It will trade with anything it doesn't have at least five toughness or offer a two for one all the time, right? Because yep. anything that trades with it can kill anything else. So. Right. That's pretty scary. I mean, I think that's really solid, and give you the extra ability to enrage it. You know, oh yeah. If you have sorts of enemies or whatever. Yeah. So uh, I like it. I like uh, when I initially saw the enrage. Oh wait, hold I was on, really hold excited on. Is about. It, is it? Is it? Wait, is it dealt damage? It doesn't. It doesn't have to. It doesn't so, have to be from a buff. No, 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 no. It doesn't have to survive the damage. No, it doesn't. It, right? have to it's only the, so, so, so yeah. the things that put counters if it survives the damage. Right. It triggers even if it does. It's just if it dies, the counters. It, right? I'm pretty sure. Uh, Nikab, you haven't opened the promo cards yet. We're saving those for last, so yeah. uh, we want to definitely get through yeah, these cards so we can get those I, promo I know there's cards. some with the clarifying text, but that's because it would get counters. It only gets counter the enraged counters if it lives the, to the damage, but that's why it's that minor tick. So right. I think because that's uh, the And then too. next next up, uh, and last on this pack for me on Uncommons, uh, is Reaver Ambush. So it's an instant, you exile target creature with power, three or less. So for a three drop, uh, you're exiling maybe a, uh, a more powerful merfolk or pirate. Uh, it doesn't tri uh, target some of the, the larger creatures that your opponent might get, some of those really big uh, bombs, but um, I'm happy with this card to kind of help uh, get some of those other buff cards uh, off the table. So, um, yeah, no, I, I like that card. I'm playing that card. Uh, I'm into it. You killed a lot, uh, for sure. Yeah, so far right now for me, I think I'm taking Needle Tooth Raptor out of that pack, though. Yeah, so my uncommons, first one, a Mausoleum Harpy, five drop, it's a creature, flying, three, three, and if I have a, the city's blessing, or the key to the city, as I call it, whenever another creature you control dies, if you have the city's blessing, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Mausoleum Harpy. Nice. So, so cool card. Um, yeah, it's it's one of those cards, like I said, like, it's a mediocre card without the city's blessing, but if you get it, and you can start getting those one, one counters added to it, it can become kind of a card that uh, gets a little out of hand for your opponent to deal with. The problem is, with a five drop and having to have that City's Blessing, it probably doesn't trigger early enough to really get uh, big enough to, to kind of hurt your opponent the way you hope it would. Um, I think it's good in seal. I think in, in draft, it, where, especially the amount of heat damage it's going to be too slow. Yeah. In draft, though, in seal, sorry, it could be a bomb, because you get you put it in a lock situation, that thing is it's fly or it's three it's big really fast, you can start tying that bidding and making huge fire. Yeah. So if you go wide with a bunch of smaller bodies and you're losing creatures a lot or like your, your tokens, and yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. Chances are it's five, chances are you probably will get the city's blessing really fast, right? Because by the time you drop, if you even if you drop on turn five, which is pretty not that super likely, but you know, that's the sixth permanent. So chances are it's having the city's blessing for five cost is like really pretty likely, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's starting to get. My next one then is a Darien Buccaneer. It's a one drop and the pirate, two, two. As an additional cost to cast Darien Buccaneer, reveal a pirate card from your hand and pay two mana. So, so this is actually a red pirate. Uh, I was pretty excited when I saw, uh, just because I think a lot of times uh, you're gonna 
if you listen with a very pirate centric deck and you're getting a 2 2 body out for one cost. So uh, I'm looking to play this as much as I can uh, in a pirate like deck. You know, showing cards to my opponent, not a big deal for me because even if even if they have the Millennium Eye and they can see all my cards, they can't beat me. It's, it's too actually impossible. Well, yeah, too good. Too good. Um, I'm like a Millennium item myself. Um, oh. So uh, one drop or 2 2. Just to show you a car, like come at me, bro. But you have to have the pirate, though, right? You, you have, have to have pirates. Pirate. It's a freaking. Oh well, yeah. You're, you're, that. But you know, my hypothetical pirate deck probably gonna be wrong with a bunch of pirates. Oh yeah. Um, but but maybe, maybe, pirates. maybe in a draft format, like this won't be great if you actually can't get well, like, like mass pirates. You know. But yeah, um, in, yeah in a draft, it. in a draft yeah, format too, this is a pretty good indicator that like yeah, you see pirates might be open around you too. So yeah, it's pretty nasty. So and then my last uncommon is the Crested Bird oh, Bowler. Yes. The five drop, trample, three, three. And when it enters the battlefield, it creates a three, three green dinosaur creature token with trample. So, so five mana for, uh, for two, essentially two, two three, 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 three bodies or, or six, six combined on the board. With trample. Uh, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Um, uh, not much. This is the kind of straightforward play card I like. You know, it's, its value is, is very apparent in that you know you're getting those two bodies. You're getting pretty uh, strong bodies. It plays into dino synergies. Uh, so if you have like the forerunner card that deals damage to all creatures, when a dino comes on the board, this triggers that twice. Uh, so there are a lot of different things that this kind of plays into that I'm really excited. I think about. I'd want to look at the format more. Like a per there are formats where this would be an absolute bomb, but based on like you look at like if you put the Daring Buccaneer beside the crew. But you could be at like, you know, in the low teens, so like single digit hit points by the time that thing puts us. Two, three, threes, like, there's a big difference between, like, if this was a 5-5 five, five or 5 four, like an elemental, or even a, a you know, say, a, like, a, I don't know, like, I'm trying to, like, two, three, threes is just not equal to one, six, six, right? Because you can pick off each of them and, like, one, things okay. like that first but, strike card can kill each of them. For your more aggressive opponent, it is better because you have two bodies as opposed to one. So if you're trying to block those those guys going wide, on I don't attack, I don't know if I agree because each of them are easily killable, right? With removal, sure. right? For for so you have to have a lot of removal to be able to do it if you're playing. You only need to remove like one of them because then the rest you can just trade through it, right? You sure. know what I mean? Yeah. If you're playing just tempo, yeah, you kill one. I think a lot of depends, right? If you're playing someone yeah. like a vampire deck, they're gonna have a lot of one ones. Maybe in that case, just thing would be. But if you're playing someone that also has dominoes. Two, three, three. It might not be great because they have a lot of big boards that hit hard. But um, I think I think so. you're with a card like this. Uh, you're looking to get those bodies out and then hope that you can kind of either buff them up or just play into those dino synergies. Uh, yeah. So just yeah. to add into the into the mix of discussion here, uh, Lumpkins, who whose username he sets a black, actually really terrible for dark mode. Yeah. Uh, because because yeah, you see that it's like it's black. I don't know how good it comes to in the card cam, but. Should probably change your your username code to something a little better, um, but anyhow, side note. I don't know. I'm I'm starting to make more like I I could see it could this could be way better. Than I think I just my my thought is that like having two three threes is not like ramping to five with two three threes. It's probably unless I've already have an overwhelming amount of stuff. It's probably not. I guess it. Well, I think you, like Registrar Alpha in Ixalan is. Universally seen as like a bomb card. Your first pick easily every time. Yeah, and once Same said, mana, just one body off. Yeah. The only thing is it doesn't get haste. No, but it's the difference is that it's like it, well, not having haste is a big deal. The thing is that neither of the three thieves can go over other things, right? Sure. There's a good chance they yeah, But you're only getting a four four body with register, it's not that much different, right? Yeah, so sorry, I, sorry, I actually I, haste is a big I, deal. I got distracted with Lumpkin's terrible color username code because he said this card is only slightly worse than your big boy. Regisaur, five mana, seven, seven. Yeah. Um, and then he said, Regisaur Alpha. No way. It's with way a, worse. With it's way space. worse. It's oh, yeah. not slightly worse. It's much, much worse. Yeah, so I invite actually Bumpkins to come down. Yeah. Um, you Maybe you can fix the stream. The stream's okay now, but you can also I just think join that discussion. Because one of them is haste, one's a 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Like, yeah. four would be a 3-3. Three, three. I'm kind of torn because you're all around, very knowledgeable person. I don't know. Bumpkins, we'll MTGO Semi Pro, uh -huh. 1800 ELO, um, once the top three streamer on MTGO. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, they're both cool cards. I think so. uh, yeah. I'm kind of torn. Um, I, either way, I think you got some solid uh, uncommons. I'm excited good. to see our rare boys. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I guess there are definitely cases where we get a lot of synergy, sort of like, 
if you're right, if you have any blue streak, you're really significant. I just don't think it's like a one for all. Like, I think there could be situations where it's like I ran to five for this for like two guys yeah, it, that it, it may not either which are super relevant, but right. they're kind of like, it's like yeah, yeah, they don't yeah. really advance. They're, they're there, yeah, uh, but the, maybe yeah, they, they don't actually give you tempo. You know, I guess, I guess having two, three, threes, four, a small up deck could be trouble in making them really two things, which is pretty significant. But it's five is a lot, and you could be, you could just, you might not cast that to turn six or seven, that could really hurt. You know. All right. So for my rare out of this pack, the boy. card I'm pretty excited about, uh, War Warkite Marauder. So it's a two drop, two one with flying, and whenever it attacks, uh, target creature defending player controls. Loses all abilities and has base power and toughness of zero one until end of turn. Wow! So you're basically turning a potential blocker your opponent has into uh, a useless card, uh, and then sending your kind of small cheap flyer through. Uh, so fun, aggressive, uh, rare card that I'm excited to play in the pirates deck for sure. Yeah. Are there how many? Um, who doesn't have? I didn't see many Tim effects. It's almost none, right? Blue green. Probably not. And blue green is. They would be so nasty. Or is there a blue red? Is there a, there's like some red things, right? Uh, some po more dangerous Pokemon. There's a bunch of red. red yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I guess. Wait, but there's no blue red. Blue red is a. Uh, blue red can blue, be pirates. Blue red, black. Blue, yeah, yeah, blue red pirates. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Blue black. In the last one, blue black was pirates. Yep. Uh, All right. But now they're. What they got against? It's really? some decent red cards. It was Captain yeah. Lannery, so I'm like, she was red. Built the monkey pirate. Yeah, there are a couple uh, of uh, other ones. Uh, yeah, right through those. Uh, yeah. I traded her to Nikepi for a card that didn't look as cool. I'll never forget that. Um, so hold on, and now we have My Rare Boy. It's a multicolor, so it's a three drop, one colorless, one water droplet, and one spinning fireball. And it's called the Protein Raider. It's a two-two, and it has the raid mechanic. If you attack with a creature this turn, you may have Protein Raider into the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Um, oh, I see. If I attack during my second. Phase, I can have it into the bathroom. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, situational, I guess. All right, so let's see. Let's see real quick. All right. So, all right. The rare mechanic is if you attack a creature this turn, you may have a Protean Raider enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. No, so it can become anything that's on the yeah. battlefield. It doesn't count just for that turn. So you cast this after your uh, attacking phase, and then you can turn it into any of the big boys that your opponent might have. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I see, I see. The only small issue is you have to actually have to attack, to attack right? right? So, yeah. so if you don't have a clear path, you're you're, you're effectively spending two to double to clone like their best card, right? right. Which may be worth it. Yeah, their best card is good. Yeah, they have like a Galto but, or that Black Dino. Yeah, you know, like off But if it's tempo, if it's it's actually decent. Because it's tempo means you get a free version of their best card. But if you have tempo, their best card might not be that great unless you're just like trading or you're hitting each other in the face, right? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like unclear. Like, and I guess you could also clone your own. Yeah, yeah, it's, know, it's, 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 oh, that's oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. your yeah. best other creature. Yeah. So, so I guess the only kind of thing, I guess the only situation that's going to be good is you have like a lot of like crap cards, like both you. Have, but that's like, the issue if you're if you're playing pirate attack, you might have a lot of cool cards. I yeah, guess yeah. yeah. I guess in a flying actually in a base deck, it takes all those abilities too. So you if you're playing, it's probably sorry. If you may have just another card that you like the ability of, maybe a card that like buffs something else up. Yes. Yeah. So you could. You can steal kind of anything on the board that you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be the big body. Yeah, yeah, if you're playing blue, red, like invasion type control, like so you copy another invasion creature, so then you have two like hostage takers, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah. Two yeah. Card, yeah. like, you know, now I have five hostage takers. Yeah. yeah. What are you gonna do now? Right. You're gonna lose. Uh, exactly. But the invasion is especially because it means you could probably attack for free because you're right. you can just if even even if you're losing a tempo race, you you attack for free, even if you wouldn't otherwise, you can just give up the one blocking. So let's see. So, one could say not bad. Copy a nice fat war kite marauder. Suddenly, two of their cards are useless. <laughs> yeah. Copy a nice fat two two unblockable haste. Yeah. Easy game. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. one can test yeah. faith in that card. No, yeah. I think I think it's all. I think it's pretty. I think it's rare for a reason. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty nasty. And the uh, only know, hard part about it being pick one in a pack is that you dedicated yourself to those two colors at least. So, but maybe you can work in just a splash of your pirates, or you just use those treasure tokens as yeah. pirates. And I'm gonna be honest, my knowledge of rivals is not great yet because I've I've only seen two streams of one. Semi pro MTGO player, so <laughs> that's my knowledge. But like seeing, you know, his his intake on his up, so he's actually chatting in yeah. the chat room. So if you have any questions for him, he's uh yeah, feel free to follow him. 
like, follow, subscribe. Like, follow, subscribe our channel uh, down below. Um, you know, but yeah. For me, easy. Warpack Rod is my first yeah. case, my back. Protean Raider, I love two color cards because they, they're hard to pull which is badass. It's the last 15 turns. Uh, those are the lot, those are two packs. You open those. Yeah. So, don't let so me we're gonna open up now our Anger Wrath. Anger Wrath. He's a Minotaur with a, with a lightsaber, a lightsaber with. I'm excited, um, man. Pack three. Pack let's three. Uh, let's crank through these ones so we can get through. Yeah, so uh, let's do, talk about some deck building. Let's, let's do what we did time. last yeah. time, Jeff, and just pull yeah. out the ones we've seen already. Seen it. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Uh, I don't think we've seen any other. We've seen this one. We've seen this one. We've seen this one. Oh, you got the Elder Blue one? That's really yeah. nasty. Whoa! Bomb! Oh, looked at your rare? Oh my god, I'm sorry. I looked at my rare. I think Secrets of the Golden City is my favorite. I'm sorry. I think Secrets of the Golden City is my favorite. Yeah? Yeah. Especially with the rare. What are you doing? What a bomb. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it just looks. Oh my god, alright. Spoilers! Spoilers! I looked. Alright, so we're gonna power through these. Flood of Recollection, two drop, just to get back a card. Um. Soul of the Rapids, five drop, flying, hex proof, three two. Um, Jade Bearer, we, we know all about this card. We know it has some symmetry issues. Um, it might be a good card. According to Eric, it's a good card. Um, but it definitely has some symmetry issues. Um, <laughs> I'm put these here in case Eric has any. I do want to say I got another forerunner of the Empire, uh, which again, I just talked about. I do like it. Uh, I think it's a fun card to play uh, with Dennis. And Martyr Dennis. of Dusk, uh, two drop, two one. Or one. And then Dust Charger, which Jeff got, now I got one. Uh, it's, a, it's a four drop, three, three, but gets plus two, plus two if I have the city's blessing. So, you know, before we, before we go into new cards, do you have any any one of these that really stand out to you? These I just powered through. Martyr of Pog Champ. That, yep, that is right. So. While we're looking there, I'm going to just talk about some of the common cards I got. Uh, I got Thrill Death Spirit, which we have Solar Rapids. Uh, so yeah. yeah, we got Thrill Death Spitter, which we haven't seen yet. So it's a three drop, three two body, and it's enraged. Uh, is that whenever it's dealt damage, it deals two damage to target opponent. So uh, pretty nice enraged trigger. Uh, pretty decent body for three mana. I don't know, nice decent common uh, dino all around. Uh, next up we have Divine Verdict. So it's a four drop, uh, destroy target attacking or blocking creature. So your opponent has to come at you with this, but. It's solid removal and it can take care of uh, any size creature, which is kind of nice. Um, it's a little uh, expensive if you end up paying it for a smaller creature, but if you're dealing with a bigger body, uh, that might be a nice play in white. Uh, next up, a card I like, pretty similar to Savage Stomp, is Hunt the Weak. It's a four drop, put a one one counter on target uh, creature you control. That creature fights creatures you don't control. I actually have one of those two, so. The only difference there between that and Savage Stomp is that Savage Stomp is three. Here's mine. Uh, it's uncommon, it. and Savage Stomp uh, only costs one if you play it on a dinosaur you control. So this, uh, basically a weaker version of that, but nice since it's you know uh, still a very solid card on the whole. Um, Next up, we have Vampire Revenant. Uh, so it's a four drop, three one flyer, pretty straightforward. Uh, maybe a little expensive for the three one body, but overall. Yeah, we're seeing kind of like, uh, you, know, you, do, you, have, you have like my sister, brother booster here. We're, we're seeing like. Brother booster. Brother booster here. So, so we're seeing we're seeing like. Solid Vampire card though, might play into some of those Vampire synergies uh, if you're looking for that in a draft. Um, and it looks cool. It is like there's a boat in the background, and then there's a guy, like a ghost guy. Um, it also adheres to the art rule that they had to institute after the first couple of years that if uh, a creature in the art was not touching the ground, you need to block. Oh, really? There was a fog rate that swamp walked. And I think there's a frozen shade that is plus one plus one. Neither of them flying, and so many little kids were like, "It looks like it flies." So, so at wow. some point, they instituted an art direction. That Interesting. If, if, if its feet had to be touched the ground, yeah. it did not apply. I, I have one that break, I have one that breaks that that we'll talk about. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a problem. Uh, our, the art standards. <laughs> uh, last common, uh, or last two commons. It's I like have. Yeah, more game affecting the safety issue. <laughs> right. right, right. <laughs> um, is a uh, Guild Grove Stalker, so it's a two drop, two one merfolk, and it can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. So a nice early game play to kind of beat your opponent out to board, uh, and they can't block it with their small creatures, especially if they're playing an aggressive deck, this gets through a lot of the time. Um, and then the last common card we have is Buccaneers Bravado, so it's also a two drop instant, 
and you get to choose one of these two things. Uh, either target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains first strike until the end of turn, or target pirate gets plus one, plus one, gains double strike until the end of turn. Uh, so depending on what you're going for, uh, if you have a pirate's deck, that kind of opens this card up to be a little bit more flexible for you. Um, so, decent instant card. Uh, I, I not great, but I also really like the name of this card. Alliteration Buccaneers Bravado. Also, it's it's like a Jedi pirate with like a, a hook arm, but there's like a flame saber coming out of it. Yeah. So, color me impressed. Yeah, so any of these uh, common cards that really jump out at you, uh, anything you feel worth yeah. commenting on? Or yeah. kinda, kinda what, would you, what, would you, what would you pick? I think in this format, this seems a little weak. Divine no Murder Town. Because it, so typically in this card, this that's like on the expensive side of the kind of um, there's a name for it, but like chills attack your blocking yeah. the arrest type card. That's pretty bog standard, but in this form, which is fast so far, the ability is very slow in yeah, so, right? Yeah. You can't pick off non creature type things with it. Uh, you have to wait for them to do stuff. If you're playing beat down, you have to hold the form that you know you have to slow down your beat down just to kill a blocker. And just like, you know, it's it's pretty slow, and it doesn't even it doesn't even let you do the damage that turn because you get to block it. Yeah. And if your opponent's in white, uh, generally, you know, right. you're, you're going to see if they're keeping the four mana open to try to deal with one of your attacking yeah. creatures, too. Yeah. 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 And this is a pretty standard combat trick that's just more Yeah, actually, yeah. I mean, it's, I guess it's it's a pretty solid combat trick if you're, the, if it's, I mean, basically plus, plus two double strike. Oh, so, actually, that could be a lot. You could allow a pirate. It's actually, I would, you need a, enough pirates, but yeah. the double strike is really nasty because it's having, like, Allows to kill like for free, like a like a two power pirate just doesn't yeah. kill. Oh have, no, not for free. I have three toughness. I have a I have a judge question. If I have double strike and I kill something on the first strike, yes, it doesn't deal. The, the, the second the second yeah. strike is just yeah. is lost. Yeah, one lost. one comment is that like the um the the forerunner is really dependent on the, the your best couple of dinosaurs. Oh yeah, yeah. You either yeah. need a bomb well, or you need a Oh yeah, we have one. We have one. Yeah, back here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna go through my commons now. Yeah. Um, I actually don't have a lot after pulling out all the the, the dupes. So uh, we have Miss Cloak Herald. It's a one drop, one one. Miss Cloak Herald can't be blocked. You know. Color. You know. Sign me up. It also has a cool like Merfolk Aqua Aqua Spear. Um, so a one drop, one one can't be blocked. Um, you know, it's pretty cool um, because I can just attack with it. That one, I think. Nice to get damage through card. Have we seen Swaggering Corsair? Uh, we one? The three drop. We did. We did okay. have that. I had that. Uh, so three drop, one. raid, it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it if you attack with a creature this turn. So, you know, if you're triggering that raid mechanic, um, you know, you'll, you'll bring this guy out of your second main phase, uh, but it'll be a three three instead of a two two. Um, so, for three, for a three drop, you kind of want to do that because a three drop with a two two, you kind of want to go get it. Yeah. It's not great, um, and then I think we've seen. Have we seen Sanguine? Well, Sanguine, 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 Sanguine Glorify. I don't think we have. So, no. It's a four drop, three three vampire, and when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on another target vampire you control. So, um, you know, it's. I think it's a. You know, for the for the price, you know, it's it's not it's not a bad deal. No. Um, and then my last. Um, my last uncom my last comment is impale, which is a four drop that requires two skulls, so two skulls, two colorless, and it's just sorcery speed and it's destroy target creature. Um, so so um, solid card. Man. Yeah, he Mlex was talking about this at lunch. Mlex doesn't know about effective mana cost, but he, he said impale is a pretty good card. Um, comparing it to the card you had, um, yeah, it, much better, much, much better. better. Yeah. Uh, same same. Cost uh, essentially uh, outside of having to, to dedicate two swamps as opposed to uh, three of any, it's two of any. But destroy target creature is much more powerful because basically, as long as it doesn't have hex proof, you can bring take anything off the board without having to wait uh, for your opponent to do something with that creature. So uh, this is dependent upon what you want to kill, and not dependent upon what your opponent wants to throw at you. So in a hypothetical world where the open world booster pack really has four cards, those four cards are these four cards. What what are what are you gravitating towards here? Um, I have to think. I have to think more through the format, but I think first pick pack one would be probably the Impale as like solid removal. It's actually not as like 
four mana for sorcery speed, just plain vanilla kill the creature. That's all it is. That sorcery speed is like, it's, I mean, it's removal, so, and it kills anything that doesn't have, I guess, version over generation, but it kills anything target of all and any toughness. So that's pretty solid, but it's still, it's a little reactive. It's pricey. I mean, if you're playing beatdown, you'll still take it because you want to just kill something, right. but it's it's like, you know, that beatdown's a top mana for double black restricts you, right? Um, I have a feeling that, like, the Swaggering Corsair will be significantly valued because it's, 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 uh, it is three, three, like, three power and three body in a red deck is, is fairly significant. Although well, this, this, this set actually has a lot of solid early game cards, so maybe it's not as big a deal because, you know, there's, like, all these, like, two power things for one or two, for one running around, right? I think it's solid. This is, like, this is a good, but you obviously need that card, and it's four, so. Right. I think this is the weakest. Well, like pretty quickly, I still think it's solid. Carol, I still way. think it could be a solid one drop, um, if if you have enough like like more quick buffs. Chances are, if you're playing blue green, you have a lot of evasions. If you're playing, if if you don't have any decent Merfo things, it's pretty good. Like because it can't even block flyers, right? It just yeah. can't be like you know the question like when you're down like would I rather have a one one flyer or a one one can't be blocked as well? Like not super clear. Like right. you know, I mean, probably you'd rather have that because you're probably playing aggro and playing that kind of thing, but. Right. Mark. How about those in commons you got out there, buddy? Yeah, so we're going to go through my commons now. So, um, actually, just two. Um, so Did we already see one of them? Is that why? Uh, maybe. Maybe I've, maybe I've pulled one out. Uh, I'm not sure. Is that your bomb? No, that's my, that's my, that's my bomb. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right, fine. maybe you did pull out. That's yeah. all right. Anyways, yeah. So, yeah. I have a siren, so we're new on commons. We I have here. a Siren Reaver here. It's a four drop. Siren Pirate. Um, Eric, I think, is, is his feet touching the mountain? Because this might be breaking the rule. Oh, it's flying though. Oh no, yeah. sorry, it's flying. It has it's wings just, it's just below. It has wings too. Sorry, I just thought flying would be the first thing, but anyhow, yeah, yeah, it it's a flood of your It's a it's a four drop, uh, three two, uh, flying, and it costs one less to cast if you attack with a creature this turn. So effectively, if you attack with three mana, you can get a three two with flying, um, and it's a flying pirate. Uh, cool. It's all, I like it. And then oh, we saw this one already. And needle two needle two the raptor. Yeah. It's a four drop, which if you trigger its enrage mechanic, it does five damage, um, and it's a two two. And Flood of Recollection was your other, uh, yeah, was so your other uncommon. Yeah, so this is earlier. this is Jay's discovering that it's Crush, um, Braska. Was he really is that? It's actually his mortal enemy, and she might have like done sleazy things to him. So, um, sorry, Jace. Yeah. Um, that sucks, dude. I'm for sorry. for uh, my uncommons, we already talked about Forerunner of the Empire, so we don't have to necessarily uh, throw that out there. But we do have a new one in Sadistic Sky Marchers. It's a three drop uh, vampire with flying and life link, uh, 2 2 body. And as an additional cost, to cast Sadistic Sky Marcher, reveal a vampire card from your hand, or pay one extra. So it's either a four drop, you're hoping it never will be, you're playing in towards that vampire synergy uh, because you do like that flying ability, you do like that life link where there are a lot of abilities uh, that are based on life. Um, and then last up, which I think does break, maybe, we can hang on to a rope, so maybe not, but that like uh, that flying thing, uh, is Jedi Brawler. So it's a four he's drop. He's jump kicking. He's jump kicking. He's jump kicking. <laughs> kicking. Uh, no one thinks so. Jedi Brawler, uh, creature fired, he has death touch, and then with the send, whenever Jedi Brawler deals dam uh, combat damage to a player, if you have the city's blessing, you draw a card. So a lot of times your opponent, uh, if you get to that point, uh, is gonna let you come through because they don't wanna instantly sacrifice a creature. And they'll say like a small body one, but if they only have like big boys on the board, they don't wanna take that death touch, right? Um, they don't wanna have to sacrifice creatures every time. Uh, so, you know, maybe they're letting you get through. Maybe they're letting you draw cards. Either that, or they're thinking, man, I can't let this, my opponent draw a card, so I'm gonna have to block this thing with death touch. Right, right, right. Jeff, why don't we do your rare boy first? Because uh, you have a bomb and you already looked at it. You already cheated it. I cheated. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, let's let's. let's I think the strongest out of all the combos is Dead Eye Brawler. Dead Eye Brawler. Yeah, I think it's nasty. Yeah, because it's it kills any of it trades with any of not in region on defense. It's incredibly threatening on offense because either they are the like the. It's two four, right? So to kill it, they have to they have to sacrifice something that's four power. They probably don't have a four one, so they have to sacrifice like two guys to it. There's death touch that kills everything in its path, and and the idea of just letting it go through to hit them and let you draw a card is, I mean, you're gonna lose after if you let yeah. them do that more than once yeah. or twice, yeah. unless you're unless you're trading and killing them, right? Yeah. So yeah, the only thing I don't like about depending on any of those ascend things is that uh, 
you and your opponent, if you're both going for that, it's a race for it. And so a lot of times, uh, it's possible your opponent beats you to it. So no, you can just keep it untapped and kill it. It can kill anything. Though. No, no, but I, I'm saying, I'm saying for the set, the ability to draw the card, oh, yeah. punch three. You do have to have the city's blessing, and that's one thing I don't oh, like to have to depend on in this format. Um, but yeah, my rare card uh, is a three drop. It's a legendary enchantment. Madonna's Climb. Uh, at the beginning of combat, on your turn, put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control. Then if that creature has three or more 1-1 counters on it, transform Madonna's Climb. And on the transform side, you have Winged Temple of Araska. Uh, tap to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Or you can pay its casting cost and tap it. Target creature you control gets flying and gets XX until end of turn, plus X, plus X, until end of turn where X is its power. So uh, this thing, early on, is gonna buff up your creatures, then later on it's gonna help you out with your mana pool if you need it, hopefully you don't need it at that point, hopefully you're just using this thing to then buff up uh, the creature you already buffed up, or the creatures you already buffed up to, to hit your opponent in the face. I like this card uh, a lot, especially in a Merfolk deck, where you're adding 1-1 one, one counters to everything, you get this out early, you're starting to make your, your smaller creatures bigger quickly, and you don't have to keep adding 1-1 one, one counters to the same creature over and over and over again. You can add 1-1 one, one counters to every creature you control uh, to not trigger this thing to flip if that's what you want to do and just keep building up those 1-1 one, one counters. So uh, kind of flexible in its ability on the front and then a very nice ability on the back as well. I mean, you can flip that right away. Because if, if you play it, if you have uh, two counters already, already yeah, on one creature, you play it, declare attackers, it flips right away, and then you can like smash people. Right. That's, that's so uh, I'm just gonna slide my rare boy in here. You might have seen it. It might have been one of the first spoilers uh, from Rivals. It, it is Galta, Primal oh. Hunger. So we have the biggest boy. Oh, the biggest boy. The biggest boy. Twelve drop. Twelve, twelve. Jesus, those, those are I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to kiss Mark on the mouth to get this card. Those, yeah. those are big numbers. It, it is, you can cast it for less, depending on the power mm -hmm. of your the current things on your board. But yeah, this is a big, big This, this needs a hyphy mask. This needs a hyphy mask. Um, we are not sponsored by hyphy mask yet, but we're working on it. Um, so these sleeves are beautiful. They're amazing. Uh, cards look great in them. They, the cards are protected. I sleep easy at night with my cards in a hyphy mask. Um, so we're gonna sleeve this guy. Yeah, let's check out that flavor text, dude. We're getting yeah. flavor text posts. Nick Heavy in the chat. Nick Heavy in the chat. Go telling us what the flavor text is. He is right. The Earth walks, strongest of all. Um, right on Nick Heavy. Cool. Um, so that is a beautiful also, card. I'm actually gonna sleeve my other two rare boys just because you know I. I mean, you do have two bomb dinos I'm, at this point. I'm, I'm uh, uncomfortable I'm, with my. Dino. I'm feeling a little under bombed right now, to be honest with you. You know, Jeff. Don't worry. Bombs, bombs will come. Maybe maybe in our last rivals pack here. Yeah. Maybe in our last rivals pack. Yeah, here. I mean you have the kites. My kite turns nothing into a zero one for free. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's only it's only in my when I attack, so it doesn't. You can ping it. Doesn't yeah. Yeah, ping it. Um, so oh, one last thing with this is that the dive ball or the death touch is in descent. It's only the correct yeah. card. Right. So it does help you lock up the board, which is helpful for getting ascent. Mm -hmm. Which means that you're more likely, likely to set up a conservative Yeah. Boom. Oh man. So. Um, I have a hard stop around 5.30, so I think our goal yeah. here is to go Let's through, through the rest of this booster at least. Um, we'll see if we have time to do the Ixalan, but yep. we'll, do it. we'll definitely do these, this one, we'll power through this one, and then we'll go through our, actually our rare, which we haven't yeah. opened up yet. Um, so All let's, right, let's turn about So yep. uh, Jeff has a, a Merfolk, I have a Dino, so here we go. So we're just going to do the same thing again, where we're going to go through it, and we're going to pull out the ones we've seen. We should get quicker, right? Should get quicker, yeah. I've seen a few of these already. I've seen this one. Mm -hmm. I've seen this one. Jesus, all these I've seen. Let's not check out those guys. Ooh. 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 Let's check out those guys. Ooh, sorry, look at my rare boy again. <laughs> see that. So, I'm gonna, so we've seen Shatter, two drop to destroy target artifact. Um, we've seen Moonity, as uh, Nick Heavy called it. Uh, target creature and opponent controls deals damage equal to its power to another target creature that players control. So. And if your opponent's got Galta, you just mutiny that boy on someone else. Um, great card. Squire's Devotion, three drop, enchant, gets plus one, plus one. Um, and when it enters the battlefield, you create another white one, one uh, token with lifelink. Um, Jeff had a water knot. We're going to see it again. Um, 
basically it's just four drop, um, tap, and it stays untapped for the next turn. So good to tie yeah, up. Yeah, all turns. Uh, it doesn't untap your untap step. So it oh, it doesn't untap. Oh, so it's kind they, of like They can a, use an ability to untap it, but as soon as it gets tapped, you can untap there. Yeah. Naturalize, we've seen this one. I had one of these already. Two drop, destroy target, uh, artifact, or enchantment. And then again, another Miss Club Carol. One, one, one. Can't be blocked. Um, so, yeah. so just so six cards in my pack that we've seen already. So, you know, this there's 196 cards in this deck. I don't know. I know my math forte is focused on effective mod cost, but this is kind of like crazy mathematics yeah. here. Uh, just to kind of get this. Um, so what, what dupes do you have, Jack? Uh, I'm actually, I just set my dupes aside. I've just gone straight into the, the new ones. Okay, sure, sure, yeah. Uh, so I think, the, uh, I don't think we've seen Crashing Tide yet. Crashing Tide uh, is yeah. a sorcery spell, three drop. Uh, it has flash as long as you control Murpha. Uh, and you return a target creature to its opponent's deck, or hand, uh, then draw a card. So uh, essentially get something off the board for at least a turn. Uh, get a card in your hand, and maybe you know, set yourself up for something better. Um, and then, if you have a Murfolk, you can play this, uh, you know, at any point. So that's kind of a, a good thing there. Um, next up, we have Fathom Fleet Porter. Uh, I actually am a fan of this card. Uh, when I saw it, it's a three drop, three three, which is, you know, I think great already. Uh, but then when it enters the battlefield, you lose two life unless you control another pirate. So it does have some drawback, but. Hopefully you're playing an aggressive Pirates deck where that doesn't in you at all. Um, next up, we also have another 3-drop. It's a 4-2 Dino, pretty straightforward. Araska Throwback. Uh, so it's a 4-2 four, four body, 3-drop uh, Dino, and that's it. Um, and then finally, for our commons, we have Evolving Winds. So sacrifice Evolving Winds, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Uh, that is this guy's ability. So um, essentially, you get this thing out, and then you can keep tapping to find uh, lands that you want to find. It's actually, I think, pretty powerful to help fix your mana base. Um, so it can be very useful. Uh, and then it does add those to uh, the battlefield. So uh, that's pretty exciting as well. Um, so, so that's all your commons and uncommons? Your new ones? Those, are, uh, those are just the commons. Yeah, those okay. are the commons. So I'll go through my, have, we, have we seen Brazen Freebooter? Oh, uh, we haven't yet. So it's a four drop. 3-3, three, three. when it enters the battlefield, create its colorless treasure artifact token. So this is a beautiful card because it costs four mana, but when you play it, it creates a treasure, which can give you a mana back. So the, actually the effective mana cost of this is three. Uh, you know, Eric here is nodding very, very intensely. It's kind of like contract killing right here. Uh, we just keep this card around just because it's good. Um, there's that card. Sun Sentinel, it's actually Sun Sentinel. I was talking earlier about the guy with the stick up front of the booster pack. It's a stick with a circle on it, and it's a two drop, two two vigilance. So cool card. Um, I guess having the stick with a circle on the end gives you vigilance. Um, yes, yeah, something where you smack. Yeah, you just smack him. You're like, get out. Um, next up, two drop, uh, uh, Dusk Legion Zealot, one one. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose one life. So two drop for one one. You lose a life, you get a card. You know, not bad. Pros and cons. Um, and then my last comment is Gleaming Barrier. Oh, wait, Jeff's, Jeff had this one. It's a 0-4. It's a wall. Yep. Uh, for two mana. So um, what do you guys think about here? What would be your, your pack one, pick one, uncommon card that we have not seen yet? So mm -hmm. really, really applying the filter hard on these. Um, I'll go with the two drop, two two with Vigilance uh, here. Uh, as far as the, uh, the common guys go, it's a pretty straightforward card. Uh, two for two two. Uh, solid already, but then that a bit vigilance ability on top that you're not really paying any extra for is pretty nice. Ooh, yeah. uh, I think it depends on your pack. Um, I would hopefully uh, never. Who are that you your first pick, right? Okay. Okay. If yeah, this is just these, the only, I'm just saying cards. these are the only options. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So if you have no other cards, no other cards. First card. Uh, if you have no other cards, I guess I think I'd either go the. Uh, I mean. I think I'd either go the Freebooter or the Barrier. Okay. I mean, the Zealot's okay. It fills in as three cards, but you lose one life, and you get a 1-1. Yeah. You're not impacting, like, grabbing, like, a second thing for 1-1. One, one. It is a free card. It's a free 1-1, one, one effectively, right? You spend two mana, and you lose a life. Um, if you have no, I think the Freebooter probably has the biggest chance of impact is because you have some ramp. Right. Um, in plain red. So you just cancel your ramp, and it's a solid body. Cool, yeah. 
and then I mean, there may be a world where um, I think the white is. I mean, the white it's a two two. The vigilance on a two two is not. I guess it helps you a little in the race. I don't know if that makes it easier. I guess if you have a thin use buff, it's right. a lot more important. Okay. So do you want to go through your own common tool? Yeah. Yeah. So we have uh, storm fleet swashbuckler. So a two drop two two body, and then it has ascent. Uh, so. If you, uh, Stormfleet Swashbuckler has double strike as long as you have the City's Blessing. So that's kind of a nice ability oh, for wow. Ascent, but the 2-drop two 2-2 two, two is solid regardless. Um, if you get that Ascent, though, it makes it that much better because it's hitting for 4 every time. Um, uh, next up, we have Horn Swaggle. Uh, this is a 3-drop instant counter-target spell. Uh, you create a colorless treasure artifact token. Uh, so three drop to counter, um, that's all right. And then you're getting something to help out your mana base as well with that treasure. So uh, decently playable uh, in a blue deck. You're trying to maybe prevent your opponent from getting something bigger out on the board. Uh, that's going to kill you. Um, and then finally, we have a three drop sorcery uh, called Arterial Flow. Uh, each opponent discards two cards. If you control a vampire, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. So definitely playing this in a vampire deck. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the discard two cards thing because you don't really know what your opponent's discarding. If you do and you know they only have two good cards, great, but situationally this may not actually affect your opponent all that much. Um, then the life gain uh, and the, the life take is, is alright. I'm not a huge fan of that. From my uncommons, uh, Stormfleet, uh, Stormfleet Swashbuckler is uh, my, my favorite. So, now for my uncommons, uh, Eric's saying that each color has a forerunner. Yep. He almost said it. Um, I actually got the green one now. Forerunner of the Heralds, a four drop. It's a Merfolk Scout, three, two. And when it enters the battlefield, I might search my library for a Merfolk card, reveal it, then put it at the top of my deck after I shuffle it. And whenever another Merfolk creature enters the battlefield of my control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Forerunner of the Heralds. So, um, the Merfolk deck, pretty, pretty good card. Pretty good card. Uh, you know, you can tutor out that one card. Um, maybe that big boy you want. Maybe yeah. That, maybe that, uh, whatever it was called, Kamema, Kamina. Kamina. Um, next card, Curious Obsession. It's a one drop. Enchantment. Uh, enchant creature gets plus one, plus one. As whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Um, and after the beginning of your end step, if you didn't attack with the creature this turn, sacrifice it. So uh, it's a one drop. It's a lot of conditions. You kind of need to hit the player. If you attach this to a flyer, to a, a, you know, a low-cost flyer, you could help you draw cards early. What about a little like, unblockable mystic? Oh yeah, the unblockable mystic. So this, this you know, synergizes really well with that. Um, and then my last card, my last uncommon is actually a pretty good one, Ravenous Chupacabra. Ooh, um, this is like, easily the best uncommon in yeah, this set. People love this card. It's a four drop, two two. When, when Ravenous Chupacabra enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent control. So, Chupacabra uh, enters the battlefield, clear something. So yeah. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it. It's a good card. Anyhow, so let's go to our rare boys. Yeah, my mine's garbage. Uh, okay. Yeah, awakened amalgam. Amalgam. It's a it's a four drop golem. Uh, star star has its power and toughness, and its oh, power and toughness are each equal to the number of different differently named lands in control. <laughs> this is a garbage rare card. Garbage uh, rare. It literally is I, a wild card. I, 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 I got no no bombs in my pack. I'm pretty upset uh, if this is what I get yeah. going into a pre-release event. Uh, not really much to build around for me. And here. then my rare is actually what Jeff got last time, Warkite Marauder. Nice, um, dude. So, so we got that. So, so yeah. Curious. Let me see what that the last pack was for me. So should Starfleet, Starfleet Squadron. Do you wanna so we have fifteen minutes left? Do you wanna just power through the Ixalan ones? We don't really need to I think say much about yeah, it. Yeah, we, we can just go, go through, through it. Ones. Um and then um, we can just kinda of talk to yeah, that. See if there's any build arounds for me here on Ixalan. Yeah, so I have a Sunrise on. Seeker, Desperate Cat Sway, Sun Crown Hunters, Vampire Zeal, Ixali's Diviner, Opt, Unfriendly Fire, Dive Down, Raising Whiptail, Demystify. Rigging Runner, Air Elemental, Good card. Snapping Sailback. Yeah. Um, my rare here is Sword Point Diplomacy. It's an okay card. Uh, situational. Uh, so, uh, 
Yeah, the only really noteworthy cards, uh, I think, for mine, are that uh, Wild Growth Walker, uh, which I do kind of like. So whenever a creature you control scores, put a one on counter on Wild Growth Walker, um, you gain three life. It's a two drop, one, three body, uh, but it can build itself up uh, based on some synergies. Uh, Ixalan's Binding, which uh, I like as a card, uh, basically a removal card, um, and prevents your opponent from playing any of those cards as well. Um, Spawn. The average situation is you take, you, you, they take three life to get rid of the, wor the worst card in there, and you get to draw two. And then so you draw the next two best cards. If they take six to get rid of it, then you, I mean, I guess, so six, it's still true. You get the worst card, which is probably a land, but you right. still hit them in the face for six. Yeah. So, which is, you know. Not bad. Yeah, if you're playing a beat down, if you're playing a, a, a tempo deck, you don't want it. Uh, and then my rare from that pack, which I do like, is a four drop Merfolk Waker of Wind. It's Merfolk Shaman, you three three, uh, and then you can pay uh, it's uh, a certain cost, uh, essentially two forest, and then X. Uh, you put X one one counters on target land you control, and that land becomes a zero zero elemental creature with haste. It's still a land, so uh, you're basically turning all of your land cards into elementals, uh, which is kind of a fun card. Uh, so it's a bomb card, I think, in uh, in limited format, um, so uh, this is probably what I'm looking at this point to build around. Uh, if I have enough Merfolk, which I don't, I don't even think I do uh, yeah. with the cards I have at this point. So this is our last booster, so going into this booster I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling um, pretty bad. You know, but I'm going to I'm gonna have to piece something together. I'm going to be a little clever, I think, with the, uh, the deck I would build from this set. So here we go. Here, so... Queen's Agent, the Brazen Buccaneers already have one of those. Leech's Judgment, full removal. Um, Skull Duggery, great card. Um, another Sailor of Means. Sailor of uh, Means. Sailor of Means. <laughs> um, dive Down, Grazing Whip, another Grazing Whip Tell, another Demystify. Um, Sky March Bloodletter, great vampire. It's a three, three drop, two, two, flying, great card. Um, Vicious Conquistador. Another another card I really like. One drop, one two, um, and whenever it attacks, each opponent loses one life. Bulliger Brontodon, I think he's actually the guy in the the naturator, whatever the one with the naturalize. I think this is him. I think his foot is there, except you're replacing the the sword with the thingy there. Yeah, then great uncommon cards. My uncommon charging monsters are actually a really. And the best, the best uncommon maybe one of the, the better uncommon. I really like Vicious Conquistador as an uncommon um, as well. One drop, one so, two, and it, it always paints your opponent. And then Mythic great. Rare, my rare boy. Jeez, uh, uh, can this guy get any luck? A Tishana, a skill, opening uh, skill. Yeah, Tishana is exactly what we were talking about the card earlier too. Is that uh, I think it takes away your hand size limit, and then uh, it's power and toughness, where you yeah. get two your hand size. So uh, kind of ties in with what we were talking about earlier. Like fish boy, yeah. Yeah, so. your fish boy. Uh, I didn't, I didn't really get anything great here. One card of note is yeah. Sky Terror, so it's a 2-2 Flying Menace uh, uncommon card. Uh, I do like Sky Terror a lot oh, if you're you running a red-white. And then uh, my rare in this is Fathom Fleet Captain. So it's a 2 drop 2 one with Menace, but whenever Fathom Fleet Captain attacks, if you control another non-token pirate, you may pay 2. If you do, create a 2-2 two -two, uh, pirate creature token with Menace. So a uh, strong pirate. Uh, rare pirate in black, um, you know, a, a nice play for sure. And then I did actually get a shiny dead eye Ooh. tormentor. I'm uh, definitely gonna be trading. Want to show I'll be, that. Yeah, definitely gonna be trading with Jeff for this one. Um, obviously, after after the, the, the sealed sealed deck we build, yeah, yeah. hypothetical sealed decks we're gonna build. Uh, um, Mark's deck is gonna be much better than mine with all card. the bombs. He but got Jeff's here. gonna have a shiny common, which is pretty pretty awesome. Um, so got to the end. Uh, you know, it, silver lining, we've got two more pre-release packs. We'll probably be opening them tomorrow, same time, same place. Hopefully the stream will be online at about the time we're hoping for. Yep. Um, sorry for the issues today, but we got one okay. more card. Our, uh, our um, promo rares, yeah. Mark already looked at it. So I already looked at it, I can't help it, so... Um, are we just flipping it? Or? Uh, dude, I'm, op I'm, gonna, okay. I, I mean, I'm actually not going to open it, because if it's like a good one, you know, you might want to keep it protected. But we want to get into the hype in that, so I guess we should open yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to open it. I'm going to blindly open mine. Mark these, already knows what he has These sleeves here, are, this plastic is not actually a good protection, so. Um, so I'm going to open this without ripping the card. Um, so we're doing the promo cards right now. Um, so um, I actually right. can't open this. Um, right, there we go. So. 
So should I reveal mine first? Yeah, I'll go for it. that special. So it's just a Warkite Marauder. Oh, uh, so you got two uh, of those. So I've got two of these. Right. Um, so it's a foil uh, Warkite Marauder. So not bad. I'm actually pretty pumped because uh, I have a constructed blue black pirates deck. So this will be a, just a beautiful shiny card. So, so one says, there. "What was the bomb?" Just to just to recap, Mark yeah. got Mark got. Uh, Galta. Mezhal Primal Tides, the blue uh, Elder Dino. He got a Galta. He got uh, two Warkite Marauders uh, and a Tashana uh, plus a, what is it, uh, Protean Raider. So he got some solid cards. You have to play for cards. the Primal um, Dino chain. You play like your first yeah. green, you just drop that. Right, and my, uh, my <laughs> rare guy is uh, Champion of Dust, Ooh. which is a Five drop, uh, four four vampire knight. When it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards. You lose X life, where X is the number of vampires you control. Uh, you should hide it, that. It's a, it's an alright card. Uh, not not super pumped on it. You do play into the uh, the life gain. Um, this is one of those life abilities that you uh, you kind of have to pay life to get something. But that that card draw is kind of nice. Um, it's gonna help you out. Later on in the game, when you're playing this card, uh, honestly, I have to look back through all my cards to figure out what I'm going to build around, though, because there is no clear, uh, clear set of synergy says between this card good is cards. Super good and limited. Um, um, so, um, show card on camp. Sorry, we'll show it again. Um, there's Champion of the Dust. Can everyone see it? It's a little, a little tough there. So a we're gonna shiny. Maybe we got to show these before we put them in the the hype piece. But yeah, uh, solid card. Uh, no, it's a bomb. You know, but uh, I'm not sure I have enough vampires here to build around it, unfortunately. You don't, have to, you don't need that many vampires. So the one other vampire, you have a 4-4, four, four, and you draw two cards. And Wumpkin says this one counts for itself. Yes, which is the... So, yes, which yeah. Is the, so, you only need one vampire. If you have one other vampire in play, you draw two cards. Right. Two life, one in, and 4-4. Four, four. So, it's not bad. For five yeah. kind of... You know, Jeff, don't, don't be don't be any Kevy now. You know, I think, I think oh, yeah, no, it's fine. I could put together a winning deck from this for sure. Yeah, you're gonna uh, here there's just, just, there's just we're, no... We probably need to cut it today, but yeah. we're probably going yeah. to do the same, same time tomorrow, 3 p.m. PST, I think, as long as that works with Jeff. Yeah, yeah that works. Does. I'll check. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a pretty popular guy, but I'll check my calendar. Um, and yeah, um, I think either our plan is either to build um, sealed decks from this, or maybe just... I think, I, think we try to cr I think we try to crank through maybe these boxes tomorrow, and, and maybe then build sealed decks. Maybe build two sealed decks. Yeah. So we have two sealed boxes, you know, we're going to cheat a little bit, we're going to take the better of the two. I think I'm going to be pretty... I think you're going to have an easy time kind of one-upping what you got, Jeff, because you kind of got things here and there. Um, I think it's going to be really hard for me to one-up the bombs I got. Oh, yeah, it's um, going to be it's going to be tough. But, you know, I, I went into this praying to the heart of the cards. I had these I had these cards in my possession this whole weekend. It took the power of God for me just to not open them and be like, I want these cards right now. Um, so, you know, the uh, heart of the cards paid off. So, um, yeah, I got I to gotta pray to my card gods a little bit more here tonight to yeah, get something please, a little more exciting. Please do. But yeah, um, we're going to cut the stream now, but thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like, follow, subscribe to our channel. Um, and we'll be back tomorrow, same time, 3 p.m. PST. Um, again, if we get a blue one, Esper, if you're still watching, uh, you have to run down to the room to trade for it. Um, but we'll be more than happy to uh -huh. do the blue D20. Um, you know, so... We'll pray for it. We'll pray for it. So, you know, amazing stream. Thanks, Lumpkins. Eric, for here uh -huh. saving the stream. Um, so yeah. thank you, Eric, for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, we really appreciate the... the Old school knowledge, the new school knowledge, yeah, exciting cards that are ancient, the all around. You know, I always appreciate. Um, you know, I am not really comfortable with these cards. But I really appreciate your, your like. You have a good grasp on the art. Symmetry. Yeah, <laughs> it's just important. You know, we're all uh, we're all yeah. Nick Kevin said, keeping the gentleman in check. That is true. Um, so thanks everyone. Um, we'll see you at the next one. Glad, glad to drop by, guys. Yeah, thanks everyone. Appreciate it.